Synopsis. After the Summit War, once hailed as one of the four emperors of the New World and the world's strongest man, Edward Newgate, believed that today he would rest in peace at the Marine headquarters. However, when he opens his eyes, he finds himself in the ninja world and encounters a child named Naruto. Gururara kid, do you have parents? Trembling in the presence of the giant-like white beard, the five-year-old Naruto was scared. And no, I'm Uzumaki Naruto, and I, I'm an orphan, Dada Bale. Naruto, be my son. Huh? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Omni-sensei. Welcome to, what if Whitebeard was transported to Naruto world and adopted Naruto? Part 1. If you enjoy this type of content, please gently obliterate the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Remember to check out the original story linked in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. The One Piece is real. Accompanied by a furious roar, Whitebeard's vitality completely faded away. His mind flashed with scenes of his life, like a rapidly rewinding film. If he were given another chance, he wouldn't change his mind or his dreams. He wanted a family. Even more, he wanted to protect his loved ones. Roger, I'm coming to visit you. My foolish sons, let's meet again in a few decades. Whitebeard closed his eyes, but the expected loss of consciousness didn't happen. The battlefield's gun smoke and the smell of blood were gone. The surrounding commotion had disappeared. No, it hadn't. Whitebeard suddenly opened his eyes. The scene before him was no longer the Marines' headquarters in Marineford. Whether it was Teach, Garp, Sengoku, or Marco, they had all disappeared. The Marines, the pirates, everything was gone. Whitebeard touched his chest and found that the gaping hole caused by the Magma Devil Fruit's attack had disappeared. He then touched his cheek, and the half of his face obliterated by the Magma Devil Fruit's attack had also recovered. Gunshot wounds, cuts, and explosions. All traces of injury had disappeared, and he was in the same condition as before the Summit War. If it weren't for the discomfort he felt from a hidden illness inside him, he would have thought he had somehow become younger. The Murakumajiri is still here. Whitebeard tightened his grip on the Murakumajiri, the supreme great sword that had been with him for decades. He then attempted to use his Quake Quake Fruit abilities and the three types of hockey, finding that all of these powers were still within him. What kind of special fruit power had brought him to this place? Or is this heaven? Ah! Uh -huh. Suddenly, a distant scream caught his attention, causing Whitebeard to turn his head slightly. Is it another soul from this heaven like me? I'll find out. A turbulent river washed over moss-covered rocks, and Uzumaki Naruto, who had accidentally fallen into the river, was terrified. His self-made fishing rod drifted away with the current, but he didn't have time to mourn the loss of his fishing rod. He was struggling desperately, but it felt like water plants were entangling his feet, making it difficult for him to surface. Help! Help! Gurgle gurgle! Naruto had already lost count of how much river water he involuntarily swallowed. His strength was rapidly depleting as he struggled. In his despair, he even began to consider whether he should stop struggling. What difference would it make if he survived? In the village, he was still shunned and treated as the demon fox, maybe I shouldn't continue to live? Everyone in the village, they all wish I were dead, don't they? Five-year-old Naruto harbored these pessimistic yet realistic thoughts. At the same time, the umbu who had been monitoring Naruto suddenly panicked. He hadn't expected this demon fox brat to fall into the river while fishing. He was on the verge of drowning, just as he was about to rush over and rescue Naruto. The umbu's body suddenly froze. It was an instinctual stiffness. What is that? 
The eyes hidden behind the umbu mask widened as he stared at the massive figure on the opposite bank. Summoned beast? Giant? How can there be someone so tall in the wilderness around Kanoha? The towering figure in the umbu's vision was none other than Whitebeard, standing at 6.66 .66 meters. His height was unparalleled in the ninja world. Whitebeard glanced at the yellow-haired child who was gradually losing consciousness in the river. Then, he glanced across the river at the masked individual. He reached his hand into the water and grabbed Naruto's clothes as if he were picking up a small kitten. He pulled Naruto out of the water. Cough, cough, cough. Naruto didn't understand why he could suddenly breathe again. He coughed repeatedly, expelling the water from his belly. His blurred consciousness slowly began to recover in this moment of despair. Is it? Is it the Grandpa Hokage? Naruto struggled to open his eyes but was horrified to find himself suspended in midair. The ground beneath him was at least several meters away. It would be terrible to fall down. What's that? Naruto suddenly noticed a pair of huge shoes on the ground, so large that he could probably fit inside them. And if he wasn't mistaken, he thought he saw two legs. Soaking wet and stiff, Naruto reluctantly turned his head only to discover a giant face behind him. It's like a giant. Can spirits drown in heaven? Whitebeard said in a deep voice, holding Naruto and questioning him. Yellow-haired kid, who are you? Where is this? Gulp. Naruto secretly swallowed and his fear made him speak instinctively. I, my name is Uzumaki Naruto. To this is Kanahagakur. Uzumaki Naruto? Kanahagakur? He had never heard of them. Furrowing his brow, Whitebeard asked again, Which country does Kanoha belong to? Is it in the first half of the Grand Line or in the New World? Ha! Uh, Naruto was puzzled. Kanahagakur is in the Land of Fire. What Grand Line? What New World? He couldn't understand any of it. Hey, you the weirdo over there. Release the Demon Fox. No, release Uzumaki Naruto. The umbu on the side of the river sensed something was amiss. He didn't know what the two were talking about, but he knew that the giant was definitely no pushover. Hokage-sama ordered him to watch over Uzumaki Naruto, this demon fox, even if he doesn't want to. He had to do the mission, and he knew what kind of creature was inside Naruto. If that creature were released, it would be a repeat of the Nine Tails tragedy. Dragonox hair. The Umbu Ninja didn't have time to think further. He quickly formed hand seals. Water release. Water torrent. A large amount of chakra gathered in his mouth as he expelled a stream of ancient water from his mouth, creating a waterfall-like water gun that stretched across the 10-meter-wide river, heading straight for Whitebeard. Water. Whitebeard raised an eyebrow, sensing something out of the ordinary. Is this a devil fruit power that controls water? I've never seen anything like it on the seas. Is there such a devil fruit power? Whitebeard made no attempt to dodge or evade. His observation hockey didn't sense any threat. The large amount of water washed over his body, but he didn't feel weakened at all. Whitebeard furrowed his brow. Water had always been the nemesis of devil fruit users. If a devil fruit user's entire body was submerged in water, they would become completely powerless. But just now, he felt no loss of strength, as if the water were fake. What? How is this possible? On the other side, the umbu was horrified. He just withstood a ninjutsu with his own body? Hey! Whitebeard spoke again to the masked ninja. Do you know about the world government? Do you know about the marines' headquarters? Do you know about the Whitebeard Pirates? Do you know about the Grand Line? Do you know about the New World? Do you know about Devil Fruits? Do you know about the Celestial Dragons? One unfamiliar term after another left the Umbu silent. He didn't understand any of the words, and his silence made Whitebeard realize the gravity of the situation. Whitebeard realized that this world was not the one he was familiar with. He had been transported to another world. Here, there was no world government, no marines headquarters. There was no Yonko, no Shichibukai. He, Whitebeard, had crossed over. 
Yellow-haired kid, what kind of world is this? Whitebeard remained silent for a few seconds, and he stared at Naruto in his hand. This, this is the ninja world. Little Naruto shivered with fear. Ninja world. The unfamiliar term made Whitebeard furrow his brow. Was this really not the world he knew from his previous life? How had he ended up in this place? And how could he return? In that brief moment of contemplation, Whitebeard casually threw Naruto into the air and then knocked him aside. Smack! The Umbu ninja who had attempted to ambush Whitebeard was taken by surprise. The giant's reaction was incredibly swift. Caught off guard, the ninja was sent flying, crashing into two large trees by the riverbank. Blood gushed from his mouth, and countless bones were broken. He was barely hanging on to his life, almost died a violent death. Why is your body so fragile? Whitebeard had closed his hand as he wanted to ask them something, and he found out. The people of this strange world were more fragile than he had imagined, with bodies that looked like they were made of clay. Next, with a single hand, he easily caught Naruto, who had been thrown into the air and screaming in fear and asked, Is he okay? Naruto looked over at the Umbu ninja on the other side, vaguely remembering that there had always been masked ninjas accompanying the Grandpa Hokage. He won't die, Whitebeard replied. Yellow-haired kid, tell me everything you know about this world. Ah! Uh -uh. Okay. Naruto struggled to recall his limited knowledge of the ninja world one by one and began to explain it to Whitebeard. After about ten minutes, he concluded that's about it, the ninja world, ninja, Kanahagakur, and Hokage. Suddenly, Whitebeard burst into laughter. Gururara, it looks like I've arrived in quite a remarkable place. He placed Naruto back on the ground. As the world's strongest man, Whitebeard didn't hesitate. To him, starting fresh in another world was no big deal. He wasn't the boomer type, and since he'd traveled to another world, he'd start everything from scratch. If he could form the Whitebeard Pirates in the Grand Line's new world, couldn't he create another Whitebeard Pirates in this ninja world? He wanted a family, so he'd gather a bunch of sons in the ninja world. If only he could find a way back. Whitebeard's return with the new Whitebeard Pirates would surely surprise his foolish sons. Sengoku, that old man, would probably have his glasses shattered, wouldn't he? I am sure they would find it confusing. Gururara. Whitebeard, with lowered eyes, looked at Naruto, who was trying to sneak away. He said, Yellow-haired kid, I noticed earlier that you were in the water and could have struggled, but you chose not to. I remember that masked kid mentioning something about you being a demon fox. What's the deal with you, yellow-haired kid? Naruto's body instantly stiffened, not because he was caught trying to escape, but because the words demon fox had caused him to wither like a frost-bitten eggplant. He bit his lower lip, demon fox. No, there is nothing to say. Under too much pressure. Even his lip was bitten. Oh. Whitebeard inserted his Murakuma Jairi into the ground and sat cross-legged on the grass by the riverbank. He teased. It seems like you're a kid with quite a story, huh? Demon Fox isn't a pleasant nickname, is it? That masked kid should be protecting you, but he called you by such an insulting term. It's very contradictory. Whitebeard chuckled. Gururara yellow-haired kid, don't you even have the courage to talk about it? I don't know why it's like this being poked again and again at his most vulnerable scar, the psychological defenses of the five-year-old Naruto began to crumble. His blue eyes were filled with confusion and distress. Naruto spoke with a choked voice, the people in the village say I'm the demon fox that almost destroyed the village, but I really don't know why they feel that way. I haven't done anything wrong, but they really hate me. Every time I try to buy something, no one wants to sell it to me. I don't know why it's like this. I asked Grandpa Hokage, and he told me not to care about what others think. As he spoke, tears began to flow. Naruto's face was bitter. But how could I not care? So I thought about drowning myself earlier, to end it all. Since everyone wants me dead, then it doesn't matter if I die. Old man, you might look like a bad person. 
No, what I mean is, you don't have to save me. Naruto spoke softly. They say I'm a demon fox that brings bad luck. If you save me, you'll be affected by bad luck. Gururarara. Whitebeard ruffled Naruto's hair with a finger and laughed heartily. I've roamed the seas for decades, not even fearing the marine's buster call. What do I have to fear from bad luck? This Hokage guy is the leader of your village, right? You seem to be quite close to him, but if he's the village leader, why didn't he stop others from bullying you? Whitebeard was puzzled. From Naruto's description, this kid seemed to have a good relationship with the Hokage, yet the Hokage allowed others to bully him. Wasn't that contradictory? Naruto was a bit perplexed and not entirely sure. Maybe Grandpa Hokage is always busy and doesn't have time to care about small things like this? He considers these things small, but for you, it's like a mountain. Whitebeard had a very bad impression of the Hokage mentioned by Naruto. This guy doesn't seem like a good person at all. Naruto, like a fox with its tail stepped on, protested, You can't say bad things about Grandpa Hokage. He's the Hokage of Kanahagakur. He definitely has his reasons for doing what he does. Whitebeard frowned. This kid seemed to have been manipulated by a bad guy. As the Hokage, it is natural to have the responsibility and duty to help a child avoid being bullied by others. However, he did not do so and instead allowed such things to happen, causing this child to suffer from relentless bullying. He even contemplated suicide. But in this situation, this yellow-haired kid was still defending him. Did the supposed Hokage manipulate children like this? Not only did he not help the child, but he also seemed to want to manipulate his mind, making the child blindly worship him. Whitebeard sighed inwardly. Naruto's childhood experiences reminded him of his own foolish sons when they were young. From Naruto, he saw the shadows of his many foolish sons during their childhood. Suddenly, Whitebeard asked, Yellow-haired kid, do you have parents? Naruto shook his head, his spirits low. No. Grandpa Hokage said my parents died a long time ago, and they left me all alone. Gurarara. Whitebeard extended a hand. To Naruto's astonishment, he said just one sentence, Uzumaki Naruto, be my son, huh? Naruto had seen many people with normal appearances in Kanoha village. But except for the Hokage, all of those people despised him, and he couldn't forget those cold, indifferent looks. The giant before him was the weirdest person he had ever seen in his life. But unlike the others in the village, Naruto didn't see any disgust or hate in Whitebeard's eyes. He doesn't care about the demon fox. He doesn't hate me. Various thoughts rushed through Naruto's mind in the blink of an eye, and he felt his nose tingling. Hot tears welled up in his eyes, and they gradually rolled down his cheeks. Uncontrollable images flooded his mind, and it felt like there were voices whispering insults in his ears, haunting him like a nightmare. Get lost, demon fox. We won't sell you anything in our shop. There are a few boxes of expired milk in the kitchen trash can if you want. Ha ha. This brat actually went for it? So unlucky. Hey demon fox, stay away from my child. How many times have we told you not to get close to this demon fox? It will bring bad luck to our family, do you understand? Don't play with him. Demon fox, demon fox, today is Mother's Day. Do you have a mother? Ha ha. We have mothers. Hey, you're not welcome here. Go away. Don't get near my shop. Wow, is the demon fox crying? TSK, TSK, TISK? Naruto knew what those voices were. He heard them every night before going to bed, and they never left his mind. Along with the voices, there were also memories of cold looks, expressions of disgust, and rough actions. Until, Uzumaki Naruto, be my son. This sentence, so out of place, shattered all the voices and images. Naruto's blue eyes widened. He couldn't control his tears. I, I, I. Whitebeard was like a sudden burst of light in Naruto's dark childhood, a light brighter and clearer than the third Hokage's, illuminating Naruto's heart. Naruto remembered that although the Hokage cared for him a lot, 
He had never said he wanted to be his family. Naruto imagined that perhaps the Hokage was too busy. Or maybe the Hokage's family didn't agree. Or, just when Naruto was hesitating, Whitebeard said helplessly, It seems you don't want to have a family. No, that's not it. Naruto hurriedly grabbed the hem of Whitebeard's pants, and all his confusion was replaced by urgency. I, 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 I want to have a family. Naruto's tone changed from initial hesitation to a determined plea. I want to be your son. How should I call you? Gururarara. Whitebeard lifted Naruto up with one hand and placed him on his shoulder. I am Edward Newgate. Many people call me Whitebeard. And you, my foolish son, can call me Pops. Pops. Naruto wiped away his tears and said weakly, Gururarara. Haven't you eaten? Louder. But, Pops. Whitebeard Pops. Gururarara. Whitebeard's laughter was exceptionally cheerful and hearty. Naruto, remember this. When you call me Pops, there will be no one in this world who can bully you anymore. From now on, you are a member of the Whitebeard Pirates. Whitebeard Pirates? Naruto sat on Whitebeard's left shoulder, full of curiosity about this new term. Whitebeard smiled and said, Your Pops is a pirate after all. Naruto's eyes widened immediately. So, 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 does that mean I'm also becoming a pirate? Gururarara. That's right. Naruto grumbled. It sounds better than being called a fox. Gurgle, gurgle. The sound of Naruto's empty stomach was embarrassingly loud. He had come to this place to fish because there was no food left at home to cook. Usually, when he was hungry, Naruto would bring his homemade fishing rod to the riverside and grill the fish he caught right there. He also wanted to buy something to eat. Unfortunately, no one was willing to sell to him. Are you hungry? Whitebeard chuckled. I will take you to eat something good. Eat meat and drink wine heartily. Oh, by the way, you little guy, shouldn't drink alcohol casually when you're growing up. Gugurarara, Naruto quickly reminded. Pops, no one in the village will sell me anything. The word Pops flowed smoothly from Naruto's mouth. There was no doubt in his heart they will sell. Whitebeard responded firmly, just show me the way. Okay, Naruto watched in amazement as the giant who called himself Edward Newgate or Whitebeard accepted him as his son. And just like that, they left. The badly injured Umbu gritted his teeth, feeling helpless. He wanted to get up and stop them, but any movement would aggravate his injuries and cause excruciating pain. The pain made him grimace. He felt that he had let down the third Hokage's trust in him. The third Hokage had entrusted him with guarding the Jinchuriki, and now he had allowed the Jinchuriki to be taken away. If the Nine Tails were unleashed, causing another chaos like the Nine Tails attack, wouldn't he be considered a criminal in Kanoha's history? This cannot be allowed. Pops, we're approaching the Kanoha residential area. Naruto was excited, his emotions returning to normal. Can you see that direction? It's about half an hour's walk from there to my home. And there, there's a fantastic ramen restaurant over there called Ichiraka Ramen. It's always bustling with customers. Every time I pass by, I can smell the delicious aroma of ramen. The tall building over there is the Hokage's building of our Kanoha village. The Hokage grandpa used to say that he worked there. In the distance is the Hokage rock with the faces of the past Hokages carved on it. Someday, I want my face to be up there too. Naruto chattered nonstop in Whitebeard's ear. Whitebeard didn't show the slightest sign of annoyance. Instead, he laughed heartily and said, Naruto, do you want to become the Hokage? Yes. Naruto nodded vigorously. As long as I become the Hokage, the people in the village will welcome me, right? Naruto's eyes were full of hope. The third Hokage is very popular with them, so if I become the Hokage, I'll be welcome too. You're such a kind and silly kid, Whitebeard sighed with emotion. In the vast ocean, it's rare to see someone like you. If it were someone with a dark psyche, experiencing such a tragic childhood, 
they would probably have turned into a villain long ago. But Naruto was different. He was just too normal, so normal that Whitebeard always felt like there was something abnormal about him. Later on, Whitebeard and Naruto entered the Konoha residential area. The two of them were so conspicuous that they couldn't be ignored. Not to mention Naruto, who was called the Demon Fox. Just Whitebeard's towering height of 6.66 meters made him unique in Konoha Village. He could be called a giant. G-Giant. The residents of Konoha Village stared in disbelief at Whitebeard. They had never seen someone so tall, towering over them like a two-story building. It was beyond their imagination. Especially Whitebeard's heavily scarred chest and his muscular physique gave off an intimidating aura. Whitebeard, who had just experienced the Summit War, was even more fierce just his presence alone made people tremble. How could there be a giant in Konoha? Is there really a giant in the ninja world? Someone couldn't help but step back, their expression filled with shock. How did he suddenly appear in Kanahagakur? Other people were nervous. Is he an enemy? Did other ninja villages invade Konoha? Hasn't the war been ended several years ago? Quick, go inform the Uchiha police. Wait, the kid he's carrying on his shoulder, isn't that the one who brings bad luck? Is it the demon fox causing trouble again? He should be kicked out of Kanahagakur. The demon fox brought back a monster. Listening to the waves of shock and disgust, Naruto's smile, which had just appeared, slowly faded away. Feeling depressed, he gently tugged at Whitebeard's beard. Whitebeard furrowed his brows deeply. He couldn't understand why a group of adults would direct such malice towards a child. Naruto was just a five-year-old boy and yet, everyone in the village was bullying him. Wasn't the mindset of the people in this village too twisted? Did Naruto's Grandpa Hokage simply ignore all of this? What a terrible guardian. Whitebeard's impression of the third Hokage dropped a few levels. Are you okay, Naruto? He glanced at Naruto sitting on his shoulder. Naruto sniffled and wiped away his sadness, forcing a brave smile. Pops, I'm fine. I'm used to it. I don't care what they say. I'm going to be a great Hokage someday. A Hokage shouldn't be influenced by them, right? This kid. He was so mature for his age, it was heart-wrenching. Naruto, what do you want to eat? I remember you mentioned a place called Ichiraku Ramen. Do you want to have ramen? Whitebeard changed the subject to prevent Naruto from dwelling on this matter. As for the shouts about the Uchiha police, Whitebeard could guess that it was something akin to the Marines, but he didn't care, not one bit. Yes, Naruto immediately perked up. Hataki Kakashi wasn't in the best mood today. He had dreamt of Rin, Abito, his sensei, and his father during his sleep. Thinking about those who had left him forever cast a shadow over his one visible eye. Currently, he was sitting inside Ichiraku Ramen. His umbu mask, belonging to the dark side of the village, hung casually at his waist. While waiting for the ramen he had ordered, he was leafing through a particularly scandalous novel, one that made even a veteran like him blush. It's not as good as Ika Ika Paradise, Kakashi commented. Kakashi, at the age of 19, had lost much of his interest in other novels after reading a certain masterpiece. A year ago, Jiraiya's Ika Ika Paradise had burst onto the scene, sweeping through the ninja world with its astonishing popularity. Kakashi had received a copy as a gift from Jiraiya himself. Mm. Kakashi furrowed his brow and turned his head. He heard some commotion outside, but the curtains of Ichiraku Ramen happened to block his view. Forget it. Not my concern. Kakashi didn't move. Since the end of the Third Ninja War, he had become something of a recluse. Suddenly, sunlight streamed in through the window, indicating that someone had opened the curtains. Ichiraku Ramen's owner, Tuchi, the sage of six bowls who was busy hand-making ramen, hurriedly greeted, Welcome. May I take your order? Oh. Tuchi was momentarily stunned, his expression resembling that of someone who had just seen an alien. Even his quick and practiced movements in making ramen came to a halt. Kakashi sensed something was amiss. 
He turned his head a second time, freezing upon what he saw. When he turned, he couldn't see anyone behind him. However, when he lifted his gaze upwards, he realized it wasn't that there was no one behind him, it was that the person behind him was incredibly tall. Ridiculously tall. Kakashi even exaggeratedly raised his head to get a better look. Only then could he see a stranger's massive face appearing before him. He estimated that this person's height was no less than 6 meters. He could also see the person holding an outrageously large Najinata in his hand, which, if you excluded the blade above, looked like a small tree. The upper half of his body was naked. Only a large cloak was casually draped over him, revealing battle-hardened muscles and scars. His iconic mustache was highly distinctive. After making a glance over, it would be hard to forget. This is... Suddenly, Kakashi noticed someone familiar sitting on the stranger's shoulder, and his pupils contracted slightly. Is this my teacher's child? Gururara, is this Ichirakuraman? It's so tiny. Whitebeard's hearty laughter seemed to echo throughout the street. With his height, if he looked straight ahead, he could see the third floor of Ichirakuraman. He had to lower his head and eyes considerably to get a glimpse of what was inside. Whitebeard cleared the road and let out a breath towards the ground. It was like a gale blowing, dispersing all the dust on the ground. He sat down directly on the ground. Even while seated, his head nearly touched the ceiling. After picking up Naruto, Whitebeard said to the restaurant, Gururara, Boss, bring me a few bowls of your most special ramen for this foolish son of mine, and bring me dozens more. Whitebeard continued, This bowl looks too small. One bowl is not enough. I could eat it in one bite. Eh? Tuchi was still in shock, unable to come back to his senses. Uncle Ichiraku, it's me. It's me. Naruto waved his hand towards Tuchi and flashed a brilliant smile. My pops brought me here for ramen. Tuchi swallowed hard, his gaze shifting from Whitebeard to Naruto. He naturally recognized Naruto. Among the many people in Konoha, there were a few outliers, and Tuchi, along with his daughter, was one of them. They were among the few kind-hearted individuals in Konoha who didn't discriminate against Naruto. Naruto, is this your dad? Tuchi felt like he was in a dream. Didn't you say you are an orphan? Naruto's smile grew even brighter. This is my pops that I just met today. From now on, we're family. Uncle Ichiraku, I have a family now. I have a father. Seeing Naruto's smile, Tuchi was taken aback. He had known Naruto for some time. This was the first time he had seen Naruto this happy. Every time this child smiled, it was so heartwarming. He had been so strong, it wasn't easy for him. Tuchi suppressed his shock and smiled. Congratulations, Naruto. Today, you and your father must enjoy my cooking skills. At this moment, Kakashi on the side was left wondering. Kakashi was even more bewildered than Tuchi. The book that had left him uninterested lay on the table, as if he had forgotten it. His single exposed eye was fixed firmly on Naruto in front of him. He couldn't help but glance at Whitebeard, whose height was beyond belief. For a moment, he wondered if he had fallen under a Jinjutsu. Kakashi instantly disrupted the flow of his chakra within himself, but the scene before him remained unchanged. It wasn't a Jinjutsu. This unfamiliar giant was real, and Minato-sensei's child was real too. In other words, the child left behind by Minato-sensei had accepted this unfamiliar giant as his father. This, what on earth is going on? What about the Umbu protecting Naruto? What about the third Hokage? Were they just letting this happen? Without intervening? Uncle, why are you looking at me like that? Naruto sat on a stool, curiously turning his head to look at Kakashi. But when he noticed the mask hanging from Kakashi's waist, he suddenly froze. This mask? Uh, Uncle, are you a ninja too? Naruto was familiar with Umbu mask. He remembered the group of people who always wore such masks around the Grandpa Hokage. The unfamiliar ninja who had been slapped away by Whitebeard seemed to be wearing a similar mask. Naruto didn't understand the existence of the Umbu in Konoha, 
He just thought it might be a unique outfit for some special ninja. Uncle, Kakashi wanted to emphasize that he was only 19 years old, but Minato Sensei's child was. Um, how old was he again? I'm a ninja. Kakashi nodded and asked, I know you, you're Uzumaki Naruto, quite famous in the village. You accepted this strange man as your father. Naruto nodded emphatically and then corrected with a serious expression, Pops is just a bit taller. He's not strange at all. Kakashi, had he already gotten used to calling him Pops so naturally? If he remembered correctly, hadn't Minato-sensei's child never called him father since birth? What was the third Hokage doing? His teacher's son was about to be lost. Uzumaki Naruto, you might not realize what you're doing. Kakashi couldn't help but say, you're a very special child, you shouldn't accept someone like him as your father. Naruto's little face wrinkled up. Why are you so rude? Why do you care who I call my pops? You're not my guardian. Kakashi was about to retort, but all his words got stuck in his throat, and all of a sudden the warning signs in his heart had reached an extreme level. A few drops of cold sweat couldn't help but bead on his forehead. He glanced sharply at Whitebeard, and Whitebeard was also looking at him. Gururarara, white-haired brat, why do you ninjas always seem unable to stand each other? Whitebeard spoke up, whatever Naruto wants to do, he has his own judgment. He is my son, Whitebeard's son. What? White-haired brat, judging by your expression, you seem quite dissatisfied. Whitebeard chuckled. In this entire village of yours, from top to bottom, no one can be Naruto's guardian the whole village treats a five-year-old child with nothing but bullying. Even on the sea, the most disgusting pirates aren't this bad. An orphan without parents, instead of receiving proper care, is ostracized at each and every moment of his life. This village's thoughts, from top to bottom, are twisted beyond recognition. Naruto, who was beside him, weakly raised his hand. Dad, I think Uncle Ichiraku and the Grandpa Hokage are good people. Whitebeard sneered. The owner of the ramen shop does seem like a good person, but the Hokage of this village, he's the least deserving. The words, good person, have nothing to do with him. Whitebeard didn't consider himself a good person because he was a pirate, even a wanted criminal on the sea. There were plenty of people out there who considered him a villain, but that didn't stop him from judging whether someone was good or bad. Anyway, with his current perception, the higher-ups in Kanoha are a bunch of trash. They were no different from the world noble, especially after taking Naruto as his son. Whitebeard couldn't stand them even more. This giant-like guy was called Whitebeard, which didn't sound like a name, it was more like a nickname. He wasn't from Kanoha. He mentioned pirates, possibly someone who lived by the sea, with a high probability of being from the land of water. He was very dangerous. From Whitebeard's words, Kakashi keenly gathered the four most useful pieces of information. Gururarara, I can talk about your Hokage like this in Kanoha, and as a ninja, you're not even angry? Whitebeard looked at Kakashi with interest. Kakashi didn't sense any killing intent from Whitebeard, but he could deeply feel the pressure from him. Even in the Third Great Ninja War, Kakashi hadn't encountered anyone who could exert such pressure on him. He remained vigilant in his heart, ready to act at any moment. Kakashi casually replied, The third Hokage did indeed make some mistakes, and he's not entirely wrong about certain things. Gururarara, you white-haired brat, are quite interesting, Whitebeard chuckled and invited. I want to rebuild the Whitebeard pirates in this ninja world. I want to take in a few more sons to be my family in this place. White-haired brat, be my son. Huh? Kakashi had never had so many question marks in his life. He stared at Whitebeard in disbelief. The copy ninja Kakashi almost had his brain overloaded. Hey hey, uncle, you can't make jokes like this. Kakashi said with a dark face, You don't even know my name, and I don't know yours. To say something like this to someone you've never met, isn't this very offensive? Whitebeard laughed heartily, Gururarara, I'm Edward Newgate, 
the captain of the Whitebeard Pirates. Now that you know, do you want to be my son? This guy. Doesn't he understand human speech? Kakashi's forehead was almost about to display a hashtag symbol. Was this guy lacking in emotional intelligence? Or did he have excessive confidence in his own strength? At this moment, there was a commotion not far away. Hey, did you guys make a false report? There's no giant here. Do you know the consequences of fooling around with the Uchiha clan? A voice of impatience sounded. You know, messing with the Uchiha clan isn't a good idea. We didn't make a false report. There really is a giant in the village, a terrifying giant, and he's with the demon fox. Yeah, I saw them heading towards Ichiraku Ramen. This is definitely the trouble caused by that demon fox, Ichiraku Ramen. Oomph. You better pray they're really there. Otherwise, the Uchiha clan is not to be messed with. Inside Ichiraku Ramen, Naruto was getting a bit anxious. Pops, they are called the Uchiha clan. I heard that this clan is really scary, and Grandpa Hokage has always told me not to get close to them. Whitebeard shrugged. Achiha? First time I've heard of it. Gururara, don't worry, Naruto. He continued. I told you before, no one can hurt my family. This statement. Firm as a rock. Achiha police force. Kakashi also turned his gaze outside and instinctively touched his covered eye. He relaxed his guard slightly. It seems like I'm not needed here, Kakashi murmured to himself. He felt that if the Uchiha police force was taking action, there was nothing he needed to do. He could just watch the show, outside on the street where Ichiraku Ramen was located. Three members of the Uchiha police force were impatiently scanning their surroundings. They dressed similarly to Kanoha Chunin, but they wore the Uchiha clan emblem on their shoulders. The red and white Uchiha fan. There's no giant here? Uchiha Gon furrowed his brows in annoyance. He had been circling the area nearby for a while, and he grumbled to his fellow clan members, we should have caught those guys, they've made us run for nothing. Oomph. Who would have thought that someone would dare to play tricks on the Uchiha? Do they really think the Uchiha clan has fallen? Uchiha Gon clenched his teeth in frustration. If we don't show them some authority, they'll think they can trample on the Uchiha. Wait, Gon, something's not right. Uchiha Fumi, another member of the guard squad, noticed something unusual. A giant over there. What? Uchiha Gon immediately turned to look. All three Uchiha were taken aback. They had met tall people before, but the tallest one they had seen was just a bit over two meters tall. But the person before them, in their eyes, Whitebeard, who was sitting cross-legged on the ground, was already well over two meters tall just in his upper body. And the huge Najinata next to a Chiraka Ramen was even more ridiculously long. It was hard to imagine just how tall this person would be if he stood up. Comparable to a tailed beast? It doesn't look easy to deal with. Uchiha Chue, who had been silent all along, reminded his companions with a stern expression. Next to the giant, there really is a Nine-Tails Jinchuriki. Hmm. Uchiha Chue suddenly made a discovery. I think I saw Hataki Kakashi in there. Hataki Kakashi? Uchiha Fumi was puzzled. How could that guy be here? Uchiha Gon sneered. Who cares about that? The Uchiha Guard Squad is handling this case and everyone else should step aside. The three of them headed towards Ichiraku Ramen together. When they were a few meters away from the ramen shop, they stopped. Hey! Uchiha Gon called out to Whitebeard's back. Outsider, do you have a pass to enter Kanoha? If not, you're illegally entering, violating the laws of the Land of Fire. Whitebeard slowly stood up. As he stood higher, the three Uchiha had to tilt their heads up slightly. For the arrogant Uchiha, this is simply unbearable. But if they looked at the giant directly, they couldn't even see his crotch. Gururara, Whitebeard replied, As soon as I closed my eyes and opened them, I appeared in your Kanahegakur. As for the pass you mentioned, I don't have one. Gururara, No pass, then come with us. Uchiha Gon signaled to his two companions. 
The three Uchiha formed a tight encirclement. Don't take my pops with you. Suddenly, Naruto ran out from inside and stood in front of Whitebeard. He opened his small hands, mustering his courage and shouted, Pops, I'll stop them. You need to get out of here quickly. Gururara, you foolish son. Whitebeard gave Naruto a light tap on the head. Even though he controlled the force precisely, it still made Naruto clutch his head in pain, howling in protest. Whitebeard said, Even though I'm 72 years old, I'm not so old that I need my son to protect me. He looked at Uchiha Gan, Uchiha Fumi, and Uchiha Chue, grinning, You three want to take me away? How about calling two marine admirals instead? Although the three Uchiha didn't know what marine admirals were, they could still feel Whitebeard's arrogant attitude. A nameless anger surged within their hearts. As members of the Uchiha police force, they weren't highly respected in Kanoha, but no one dared to provoke them, let alone look at them with such arrogance. But now, this giant before them was showing such disrespect to the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Gan decisively drew his short sword from his waist, gritting his teeth as he glared at Whitebeard, his eyes filled with anger. A freak who came out of nowhere dares to look down on the Uchiha clan like this. Hey, isn't drawing your sword a little too much? Kakashi reminded her. Don't make the situation worse. Shut up. You're just a lapdog of the Hokage who reads dirty books all day. Uchiha Gon retorted directly. Gon. Uchiha Fumi gave his companion a stern look. What did I say wrong? Uchiha Gon argued. The higher-ups in Kanahagakur are just as wary of us as they are of thieves. What's wrong with me speaking my mind? Saying these things isn't against the law, is it? And you, you little fox? Uchiha Gon looked disgusted. If it weren't for you, the Uchiha clan wouldn't be in this situation. You're practically a source of misfortune. Many members of the Uchiha clan believed that the increasing vigilance of the Kanahagakur leadership towards the Uchiha clan was due to him. Even the entire clan was gradually becoming marginalized. Many Uchiha believed that the reason the Uchiha clan was increasingly marginalized in Kanahagakur was due to the immense impact of the Nine Tails incident. It made the Kanahagakur higher-ups suspect that the one manipulating everything might be from the Uchiha clan. The Sharingan's status as a tailed beast countermeasure was not a secret among the Kanoha's higher-ups. This led to the Uchiha clan being viewed with suspicion, and even the entire clan being marginalized. Uchiha Gan approached Naruto with his blade saying, You were so powerful back then, weren't you? Have the guts to turn into a demon fox again. I know this is a forbidden topic, but what can they do to me for saying it today? Kakashi sighed and rubbed his forehead. Why are the people in this clan so extreme in their personalities? On the contrary, his old friend, Abito, wasn't he an anomaly within the Uchiha? Demon Fox, by shielding a freak like him and obstructing the security squad's work, you've already committed the crime of harboring a criminal. Uchiha Gan licked the blade of his sword. You, too, can come with us. As he spoke, Uchiha Gan kicked Naruto with a great deal of force. He had long wanted to take action against this damned fox. If it weren't for this demon fox, how would the Uchiha clan have ended up like this? However, arrogant brat, Whitebeard's eyes carried a hint of darkness. Did you ask me before you made a move on my son? What? Uchiha Gan suddenly felt a wave of terror enveloping him, and his body stiffened involuntarily. His eyes turned blood red in an instant. The Sharingan was activated instinctively due to the threat to his life, but he couldn't see a thing clearly. Poof! Uchiha Gan felt as if he had been struck head-on by a tailed beast. The flesh of his body seemed to be separating from his bones. His facial expression contorted to the extreme. His eyes were on the verge of popping out. His body was like a cannonball flying backward, crashing into a building behind him. Then, he rebounded off the other side of the building, falling onto the street next to it. Blood spurted from his mouth and nose. Teeth shattered. Eyes rolled back. With the disappearance of Uchiha gone, the entire scene suddenly fell silent. 
This guy is so fast. Kakashi's pupils slightly contracted. With his normal eye, he couldn't see Whitebeard's movements at all, and he had no idea how Whitebeard did it. When he finally reacted, he saw that one of the Uchiha clan's guards had been sent flying. Instant ninjutsu? Kakashi shook his head with seriousness. No, this seems to be a taijutsu, an incredibly powerful taijutsu. Kakashi thought of Might Guy, but if Might Guy only opened three of the eight inner gates, Kakashi, even with his ordinary eye, could still see the guy's movements clearly. But did this white beard in front of him have the eight inner gates open, or did he use a similar technique? No, absolutely not. Kakashi was so nervous that his palms were sweating. He realized the seriousness of the situation. I don't even feel the chakra fluctuations. Is this some kind of ridiculously powerful muscle strength? Could a human achieve this? This guy didn't seem human at all. Humans couldn't be this big, right? This is beyond the realm of humanity. Gone. Gone. Outside Ichiraku Ramen, Uchiha Fumi and Uchiha Chue both showed shock on their faces. They didn't expect that a Uchiha clan ninja, facing that giant, would be so helpless. The two of them exchanged a quick glance. They made an immediate decision. Like Uchiha gone, their eyes also turned crimson, and the tiny Sharingan appeared faintly in their pupils. The two of them quickly formed hand seals. Serpent monkey rooster boar horse tiger. Huh. Seeing their somewhat familiar posture, Whitebeard grinned. Gururarara. Is it that water trick again? He had already confirmed it with the masked kid earlier. The water in the ninja world had no effect on him. Whitebeard. Fire style. Great Fireball Jutsu. Fire Style. Great Fireball Jutsu. Uchiha Fumi and Uchiha Chue simultaneously shouted. They stood on the left and right, perfectly blocking Whitebeard's path. A scorching flame erupted from their mouths, forming huge fireballs that rushed straight toward Whitebeard. The flames roared. The temperature skyrocketed. Hmm? Fire. Whitebeard's eyes narrowed slightly and he recalled something from his memories. As the image of Ace being punched through by the magma imp flashed before him, he couldn't help but wish he could go back in time and punch his foolish son. Back then, Whitebeard had already been willing to sacrifice his life to protect Ace. But to his amazement, his foolish son, Ace, had been easily provoked by the magma imp's taunt. During this moment of reminiscing, the two fire release. Great fireball technique attacks, one from the left and one from the right, had already crashed into Whitebeard's body. The intense flames engulfed Whitebeard's upper body, and the scorching heat pushed Naruto back uncontrollably. In a panic, Naruto cried out, tears welling up in his eyes, his breathing becoming anxious. Pops, Pops, are you okay? Not good. Nine Tails Chakra, is the seal loosening? Kakashi, standing nearby, keenly noticed that Naruto's nails were becoming sharp, and he looked concerned. Could it be who the intense emotional fluctuations are affecting the seal? Kakashi knew he couldn't just sit idly by. He placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder, then turned his gaze towards Whitebeard. Calm down a bit. Your dad. He's not an ordinary person. Gururarara. A hearty laugh mixed with a hint of sadness echoed from within the blazing inferno. You two little Uchiha brats really know how to bring back some unpleasant memories. Whitebeard casually waved his hand, dispersing the flames that had engulfed his upper body. Naruto, I'm not that easy to kill. Whitebeard's face still wore a smile, and there were no signs of burns on his body. Even during the summit war, when he was bombarded by cannonballs head-on, Whitebeard's body had shown no obvious damage, let alone from mere flames. He grabbed the Murakama Jairi, and a surge of his formidable aura spread outwards. Whitebeard swung his sword, he didn't use his devil fruit ability, nor did he use hockey. It was a simple strike, but it created a terrifying shockwave. The ground beneath his feet shattered. A single slash can be compared to a wind ninjutsu. This scene left the two Uchiha with their Sharingan eyes wide open, 
their hearts filled with the most extreme sense of warning. Bang, bang, their bodies turned into two clouds of smoke, and the sudden appearance of two wooden stakes was torn to pieces by the surging air pressure. Many windows nearby began to shatter as this happened. Wood and concrete of cement danced wildly in the street as the street's electrical poles broke with a deafening crash and the wires snapped one by one. The street trees, which were part of the greenery, were uprooted. The whole street was devastated. The only untouched place was a Chiraka Raman, the ramen shop, which hadn't suffered any damage, not even to its curtains. Monster? The Uchiha clan, often referred to as a monster themselves, now saw someone else as a monster. It was easy to imagine how shocked they were by the impact Whitebeard had brought. If I hadn't used the substitution jutsu in time, I'm afraid I would have died. Uchiha Fumi's face was filled with terror, and he broke into a cold sweat. Even with his single Tomo Sharingan, he couldn't find any reassurance. Uchiha Chue covered his bleeding abdomen. He had also evaded the fatal blow using the substitution jutsu, but the residual force was too terrifying. The range is too wide. He could see the trajectory of the sharp stone that pierced his abdomen with his Sharingan, but his body couldn't react in time. Uchiha Chue was horrified. He gritted his teeth and said to Whitebeard, Damn it, are you trying to declare war on the Uchiha clan? They had forgotten something entirely. It was them who made the first move. Gururarara, you two Uchiha brats, I'm Whitebeard. Are you really worthy of me declaring war on you? Whitebeard laughed heartily. You guys are as fragile as clay, even a random stone can pierce through your bodies. As his words fell, a more terrifying aura burst out of Whitebeard's body, causing both Uchiha clan members to feel as though the world had changed color. They could vaguely see flashes of black lightning. Their brains buzzed in an instant and their souls and consciousness were subjected to an unprecedented shock. The intense dizziness replaced their clear consciousness, causing their bodies to weaken. Both of them knelt down helplessly, their eyes rolling back, and they collapsed forward. Is this a Jinjutsu that can affect the Uchiha clan? Kakashi, who was still pressing on Naruto's shoulder, realized that he had made a wise choice by not interfering. Gururarara, Jinjutsu, Whitebeard laughed heartily. This is called Conqueror's Hockey. Conqueror's Hockey, Armament Hockey, and Observation Hockey are the three essential abilities possessed by the top-tier warriors of the Grand Line. As the world's strongest man, Whitebeard naturally possessed all three types of hockey. His mastery of hockey, particularly Conqueror's Hockey, had reached a level that surpassed many top-tier warriors, making it effortless for him to precisely incapacitate a few individuals without affecting others. It is too simple for him. Only those who had recently awakened Conqueror's Hockey and didn't know how to control it would accidentally knock out a group of people. Conqueror's Hockey? The unfamiliar term led Kakashi into deep thought. Was this the name of the seal-less Jinjutsu, or perhaps did the ninja village where this man named Whitebeard belonged not use the term Jinjutsu and instead referred to it as Conqueror's Hockey? Kakashi immediately examined the condition of the three Uchiha. He found that the worst was Uchiha gone. He is the one with the most arrogant mouth. He had broken numerous bones, and it looked like he would spend the rest of his life in a wheelchair well, assuming he could even be saved. As for Uchiha Fumi and Uchiha Chue, they were in better shape. The former had simply passed out, while the latter had injuries to his abdomen, but they weren't fatal. Giant teacher's child, Uchiha. Kakashi muttered with a headache. Why do I always end up dealing with troublesome things? The Ichiraka ramen owner interjected timidly. Uh, the ramen? It's ready. Kakashi fell silent for a moment. Forget it. With such a commotion, other people will definitely come, and the third Hokage will surely find out. I'll pretend like nothing happened. He decided that it would be better not to send the three Uchiha to the hospital. Kakashi didn't want to provoke Whitebeard. Without the third Hokage's orders, he decided to act as if nothing had happened. The scene at Ichiraka Ramen was bizarre. 
A foreigner who had injured one Umbu and three Uchiha clan members was sitting on the ground, calmly enjoying a bowl of Ichiraku ramen. A little demon known as the Demon Fox was devouring food with joy, occasionally looking up at Whitebeard with admiration. A former Kanoha genius, now an Umbu member, he didn't touch his ramen. He watched Uzumaki Naruto, who was devouring his food like a starving ghost and didn't know what he was thinking. The ramen shop owner wore a deeply troubled expression, realizing he had been unwittingly dragged into a serious incident. A strange situation at the Hokage's office. Huff, Saratobi Hiruzen, the third Hokage of Kanoha, put down his pipe and exhaled a puff of smoke. He tapped his aching old back, muttering, getting older, and my back starts to hurt if I sit for too long. Lately, there have been many incidents in the village that kept him busy. According to some information he had acquired, the Uchiha clan had been causing trouble recently, more than the usual kind of trouble, which threatened the foundation of Kanahagakur. Hiruzen's gaze grew serious. Fugaku, please don't disappoint me. There were better ways to deal with this situation without having to resort to this method. He closed his eyes slightly, clearing his mind of distractions. Then, with a gentle smile on his face, he murmured, I wonder how Naruto is doing lately. It's been nearly half a month since I had time to check on his well-being. He took a crystal ball from his drawer and placed it on his desk. With both hands, he gently held the crystal ball, and within it, a scene unfolded, a group of young women playfully splashing around in a bathhouse. Oh, this one's quite big and round. Poof. Hiruzen hastily wiped away a trickle of nosebleed and blushed. Ahem. Old habits never die. After a few minutes, the scene in the crystal ball changed to another. Uzumaki Naruto, with his spiky golden hair, was sitting on a high stool, eating ramen as if he hadn't eaten in days. Hiruzen smiled faintly. Naruto went to Ichiraku ramen again. Tuchi is one of the few who doesn't discriminate against him. Occasionally, he would take Naruto to Ichiraku ramen himself. Mm. Suddenly, Hiruzen's eyes widened in astonishment. Kakashi, sitting beside Naruto, Kakashi with his hair resembling a hedgehog was incredibly eye-catching. It was almost impossible not to notice. Is it just a coincidence? Saratobi Hiruzen was about to take another look when suddenly his eyes widened. Because, in the crystal ball, he saw a hand much larger than Naruto's entire body reach into a Chiraka ramen and effortlessly pick up a bowl of ramen with three fingers. Then, he heard Naruto speaking, Pops, this is the first time I've eaten two bowls of ramen in one go. When the third Hokage used to bring me here, I could only finish one. Pops? An absurd thought crossed Hiruzen's mind. Was it possible that Namike's Minato, also known as the fourth Hokage and believed to be dead, was alive? Gururara. Another voice came through the telescope technique, dispelling his absurd idea. Naruto, from now on, eat as much as you want. I'm Whitebeard, and I won't let my son go hungry. Whitebeard. Who is this? Why does Naruto call him dad? And why does he call Naruto his son? Sarutobi Hiruzen was dumbfounded. After being the Hokage for so many years, he had witnessed many bizarre things, but the images seen through the telescope technique still left him extremely shocked. In less than half a month, what had happened? What did he not know? What about the umbu placed around Naruto? Why didn't they report back? Sarutobi Hiruzen realized that the situation was not good. Naruto was the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails, and if anything happened to him, the whole of Kanahagakur would be in danger. Sarutobi Hiruzen immediately stood up. He needed to see for himself. Naruto was too important for Kanoha. There could be no room for accident. However, someone was faster than him. The door to the Hokage's office was pushed open, revealing the familiar figure of Shimura Danzo, the leader of Kanoha's root division. Monkey? No time, Sarutobi Hiruzen interrupted. Whatever it is, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Danzo was taken aback, his frustration evident. Tomorrow again? How many tomorrows are there? 
Monkey, we already have enough evidence. The Uchiha clan will definitely betray us. Why aren't we taking action against them? Why are we just enduring it? How could Saratobi Hiruzen care about that? Tomorrow, we'll discuss it tomorrow. I have more important matters to attend to. Danzo was seething with anger. Monkey, if you don't want to act, I'll make my root division act. We can't afford to wait any longer. The Uchiha are no pushovers. Saratobi Hiruzen furrowed his brow. I said, tomorrow. I have something more urgent. Danzo was trembling with anger. Monkey, I came here in person and you're just brushing me off like this? You'll regret this, monkey. If I were. Danzo, I am the Hokage. Saratobi Hiruzen closed the door, leaving Danzo's face grew darker. Slurp, slurp, gulp, 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 burp. I'm so full. After finishing the second bowl of ramen, Naruto contentedly patted his slightly bulging belly, his small face radiating happiness and satisfaction. It had been a long time since he had been this happy. When he was happy with Grandpa Hokage, Grandpa Hokage always lectured him. It made him sleepy every time. But Whitebeard Pops was different. Pops never really lectured him. Naruto truly felt what it meant to have a father's love from Whitebeard. Whitebeard is the only father I'll ever have in my life, thought the five-year-old Naruto in his heart. Gururara, Naruto, can't you eat more? Whitebeard chuckled. You need to eat more during your growing phase. Huh? Pops, isn't this enough? Naruto looked bewildered. The amount he had eaten today was probably equivalent to what he ate in a whole day yesterday. Naruto had never been this full before. Whitebeard slurped down a bowl of ramen like he was eating a jelly. He grinned. If you don't eat more, little one, you won't grow to be three or four meters tall in the future. Three or four meters tall? Naruto was astonished. Can people really grow that tall? Whitebeard ruffled Naruto's little head with his fingers and said, When I was your age, I could eat at least 200 kilograms of meat every day and could devour half a cow in a single day. If you can eat that much, you'll grow to be that tall. 200 kilograms? Naruto blinked his blue eyes. He didn't have a clear concept of that amount. Great. Naruto was filled with determination. I'll eat 200 kilograms of meat every day from now on, and I'll grow to be at least 3 or 4 meters tall. Kakashi. Listening to this father and son pair discussing such matters was quite something. Kakashi really wanted to interject with a comment. How could you teach a child like this? Can a person eat 200 kilograms of meat in a day? But Naruto and Whitebeard were having so much fun. He felt like a third wheel here. Listening to the bursts of laughter from Whitebeard and Naruto, Kakashi had a momentary hallucination. He saw the shadow of his father, Hataki Sakumo, in Whitebeard, which startled him. Am I envious? This thought crossed his mind. No. Impossible. Why would I miss that man? Kakashi quickly denied it. Take them to Kanoha Hospital. Do not notify the Uchiha clan for the time being, and when they recover, send all three of them to the Uchiha clan's headquarters. Outside Ichiraku Ramen, Saratobi Hiruzen, holding a smoking pipe, spoke with a dignified voice. Yes, Hokage-sama. Three umbu appeared each with a different but somewhat similar mask and they obeyed Saratobi Hiruzen's orders without question. They picked up the unconscious Uchiha clan members from the ground and, with a few jumps, disappeared from the scene. Saratobi Hiruzen paid little attention to the Uchiha clan members. He furrowed his brow and stared at Ichiraku Ramen. He noticed an exaggerated figure there, and the size of this figure's back was even more astonishing than Enma, the Monkey King. It's worth noting that Enma is a spiritual beast. What kind of clan emblem is that? Saratobi Hiruzen could clearly see the symbol on the back of Whitebeard's white cloak, and it was undoubtedly the emblem of Whitebeard's pirate crew. However, Saratobi Hiruzen didn't recognize it. Who is he? Which ninja village does he come from? When Naruto called Pops through his telescope technique, could he have been referring to him? The thought sent a shadow of unease through Saratobi Hiruzen. 
For the past five years, Kanahagakur had been keeping a very close watch over the Jinchuriki. During these five years, nothing unusual had happened. The reason is that the Hokage appeared in Naruto's loneliest moments, becoming Naruto's only bond. In order to gradually make Naruto recognize the Hokage, and also to make Naruto acknowledge Kanahegakur. However, it seemed like the situation had suddenly changed. A stranger had forcefully inserted himself into the bond between Naruto and the Hokage, something Sarutobi Hiruzen could not accept. A Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails is too important. Kanahegakur needed to firmly control this power. With this thought in mind, Sarutobi Hiruzen concealed the shadow on his face and wore a smile, he wasn't entirely willing to show. He walked toward Ichiraku Ramen. It's so lively at Ichiraku Ramen today. His sudden appearance attracted the attention of those in the ramen shop. Oh, Naruto? Ha, ah, what a coincidence. Hokage-sama, Kakashi wasn't surprised by the arrival of the third Hokage. Naruto had almost been taken away by someone. If the third Hokage hadn't appeared, that would have been strange. Grandpa Hokage. Naruto turned in surprise and saw the familiar and kind face of the third Hokage. His eyes lit up. Have you finished your work today? I haven't seen you in almost half a month. Ha ha ha, I'm done. I came to see you right after I finished working. I really care about you, Naruto. Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at Naruto's disheveled hair. He felt a slight pang in his heart. Usually, he was the one to ruffle Naruto's hair. Now, someone else was doing it. Clearly, he was the first to do that. Sarutobi Hiruzen asked with a smile, Naruto, what's going on outside? Why has this street turned into this? Also, who is this unfamiliar friend from another village? I don't think I've seen him before. He referred to Whitebeard as the unfamiliar friend. Naruto couldn't sense the hint of tension in Hiruzen Sarutobi's tone. He said cheerfully, Grandpa Hokage, you've come at just the right time. I have some good news to share with you, Grandpa Hokage. At this moment, Naruto's words were nothing short of shocking. Grandpa Hokage, I have a father now. I have a family. Crack, Sarutobi Hiruzen's smoking pipe developed several cracks due to the pressure from his grip. The kindly smile on his face became somewhat rigid. Naruto, I'm having trouble understanding what you're saying, Sarutobi Hiruzen said. I've told you before that you have parent. Your parents were both heroes of Kanahegakur, but they're both dead. Naruto muttered and then resumed his cheerful smile. This is my new father. His name is A. AI. Um, Whitebeard's name was a bit long. Naruto was a little embarrassed. It's Edward Newgate, Whitebeard exclaimed, dropping his head on top of Naruto's. You foolish son, you only remember your pop's nickname, but you can't remember your pop's name? Ah, that hurts. I'm sorry, pops. Naruto clutched his head, quickly apologizing to Whitebeard. Whitebeard lowered his head and looked at Sarutobi Hiruzen. Their eyes met. Gururarara, Whitebeard sneered. Are you Naruto's irresponsible guardian? You look like a dog. You can't even take care of a little brat. Sarutobi Hiruzen. Sarutobi Hiruzen's stiff smile became even stiffer, and his face turned as rigid as old tree bark. Edward Newgate, Sarutobi Hiruzen said, Do you know what Naruto means to us in Kanahegakur? Do you understand what your act of adopting Naruto as your son means in the eyes of Kanahegakur? Gururarara. Why should I care? It's none of my business. Whitebeard shrugged. I'll adopt whomever I want as my son. This is my style. Sarutobi Hiruzen had never encountered such a vulgar person. Naruto's father is a hero of Kanahagakur. He emphasized. His father can't possibly be someone from an outside village. As soon as these words left his mouth, tension filled the air. A hero? Whitebeard looked peculiarly. So, you mean Naruto is the son of a hero? That's right. Both Naruto's father and mother were heroes of Kanahegakur. They sacrificed everything for our village. 
Saratobi Haruzan stated, I promised them that I would take good care of their child, and they would never allow Naruto to recognize someone else as his father. Gyurarara Rarara, Whitebeard couldn't help it and burst into laughter. Naruto is the son of Kanahagakure's heroes, and he's treated like this? He continued his laughter. Is this what you call taking care of Naruto? Do you know what my idiot son has been through? Since he was a child, he's been ostracized by your village. Demon Fox, you should be familiar with those words, right? As the Hokage of this village, I don't believe you're unaware of this. Since Naruto is the son of heroes, why is he ostracized by so many people? The bullying he endured was inflicted by everyone in this village. Even though I'm a pirate, I damn well know that this is wrong. Bang! Whitebeard slapped the ground with a palm, without using any devil fruit ability or hockey. It was just pure physical strength. The ground shook for a while as if an earthquake had occurred. The gaze of the world's strongest man seemed like a fierce and ancient beast, staring at the third Hokage of Kanahagakure. They stared at each other seemingly ready to break out in a fight at any moment. Naruto, you cannot recognize someone else as your father. Sarutobi Hiruzen remained firm in his belief. He couldn't allow Naruto to form another bond, so that the Nine Tails would be controlled by Kanahagakure. Why, Grandpa Hokage? Naruto's voice interjected, not very loud but audible to everyone. I've never had parents since I was little. People in the village have always hated me. My pops doesn't hate me, and he doesn't care that I'm a demon fox. Why can't I recognize him as my pops? Why can't I have a family? As he said this, tears welled up in Naruto's eyes. He realized that at this moment, the third Hokage felt somewhat unfamiliar. The third Hokage he remembered wasn't like this. Naruto, you're still young. Saratobi Hiruzen tried to maintain a smile. When you grow up, you'll understand. He was about to reach out and ruffle Naruto's hair, wanting to make a more affectionate gesture. But his hand found nothing. Instead, Whitebeard directly lifted Naruto. Foolish son, what's there to cry about Gororara? You must always remember this. You're my family, and I'm your family. That's enough. Boss put the bill on this deadbeat guardian. Consider it his way of paying off a debt. Whitebeard boldly enjoyed a hearty meal for all to see. Right there, in front of everyone, he put Naruto on his shoulder. He raised his Najinata with one hand and he left immediately snap. The already damaged smoking pipe was directly crushed into two pieces by Saratobi Haruzen and they fell to the ground. He was trembling with anger and his hands couldn't help but form seals. Earth Release Hokage-sama, Kakashi suddenly spoke up. It seems that Whitebeard doesn't know that Naruto is a Jinchuriki. His affection for Naruto as a father doesn't seem like an act. Also, Minato-sensei's son truly needs a family. Saratobi Hiruzen paused in his actions, turned back, and glanced at Kakashi. Kakashi, as Minato's disciple, shouldn't you do more than just watch without my orders? Kakashi said flatly, without Hokage's orders, I don't know what to do. He added, when those Uchiha almost went after Whitebeard, the Nine Tails' power inside Naruto nearly surfaced. What? Saratobi Hiruzen was suddenly surprised. The seal loosened? Is it because it's been too long? Kakashi explained, Naruto's emotions almost broke through the seal, indicating that he has established a very deep bond with Whitebeard. A bond strong enough to break the seal? Saratobi Hiruzen took a deep breath, realizing that the situation was unfavorable for Kanahagakure. That's indeed the case, damn it. How did this white beard suddenly emerge? In such a short time, how did he establish this bond with Naruto? Even he couldn't do it. The Uchiha clan was becoming restless. The unexpected situation with the Jinchuriki. Two major issues weighed heavily on Saratobi Hiruzen, the third Hokage, giving him a massive headache. Kakashi, Saratobi Hiruzen looked at Kakashi. Now, I'm giving you a new order. From today onwards, you will be watching Naruto as the Umbu instead. 
We absolutely cannot let Naruto's will of fire be influenced by other ideologies. Saratobi Haruzen realized that even if they got rid of Whitebeard, it would be challenging to sever the bond between Naruto and him. If Umbu were to assassinate Whitebeard, Naruto would probably go berserk. If the Nine Tails Rampage were to occur in Kanahagakure again, the village would undoubtedly suffer heavy losses, especially with no Sanin present to deal with the Nine Tails. As one of the great shinobi of his generation in the ninja world, Saratobi Hiruzen quickly considered an alternative plan. He had to take Naruto back from Whitebeard and ensure that his bond with Naruto surpassed that of Whitebeard. Also, Saratobi Hiruzen continued, they must not leave the village. The Nine Tails Jinchuriki must not leave Kanahagakure. Understood, Kakashi responded with a calm demeanor. He seemed to have seen through the intentions of the third Hokage and the higher-ups in Kanahagakure. He had no further reactions to this. Kakashi put away the dirty book before leaving. He said to Saratobi Hiruzen, Hokage-sama, how about you help me settle the bill for that bowl of ramen? Yes, Saratobi Hiruzen. His mind in disarray could hardly focus. He absent-mindedly agreed. After Kakashi left, he heaved a deep sigh. The expression on his face was even more unpleasant than before, resembling Danzo's expression. Uh, Hokage-sama, the owner timidly said, shouldn't you settle the bill first? Damn it, Naruto almost got taken away. Now he had to pay for Whitebeard's meal too. Saratobi Haruzen, his face dark, took out 300 Rio coins from his wallet and placed them on the table. No need for change. Uh, Hokage-sama, 300 Rio isn't enough, the sage of six bowls said, rubbing his hands nervously. Kakashi-san had one bowl of ramen, Naruto had two, and Whitebeard had 56 bowls. One bowl of ramen costs 80 Rio, and the total is 4,720 Rio. How about I round it down for Hokage-sama? 4,700 Rio should do. Saratobi Hiruzen. What? Saratobi Hiruzen almost cursed in his heart. He reluctantly emptied his wallet, and just as he was about to place the money on the table, suddenly, his face changed dramatically. The ground under his feet started shaking violently. Starting from Ichiraku ramen cracks rapidly spread in all directions, with the ramen shop at the epicenter, the only building left unharmed. What is this? Saratobi Hiruzen's pupils constricted. He fixed his gaze on the seal on the ground. Is it that white beard? The center of the massive cracks was precisely the seal. Edward Newgate. Who are you? The situation seemed to be getting more complicated. Pops, why won't Grandpa Hokage let me have a family? Naruto's face was filled with confusion. He couldn't understand why his usually kind Grandpa Hokage was being so harsh today. It even made him feel like Grandpa Hokage was a bit unfamiliar. Gururara, who cares? Whitebeard said, anyway, this Hokage won't last long. Naruto was taken aback. Why not? Whitebeard laughed heartily, because my foolish son is going to become the Hokage. When new Hokage takes office, doesn't the old Hokage step down? Do you think I can become the Hokage? Naruto's eyes lit up. Foolish son, this is your dream. Aren't you questioning your dream? Whitebeard said. When you talk about your dream, don't doubt it. You should say it like this. I will become the Hokage, I definitely can, I will, for sure. That's what it means to be a man on the seas. Naruto was very excited about it. He clenched his fist and shouted, ignoring that they were on the street, I will definitely become the Hokage of Kanahagakure. Gururara, good, that's the spirit. Whitebeard was very pleased. You're truly my son. Riding on Whitebeard's shoulders, Naruto suddenly became curious, Pops, what's your dream? Is it also to become the Hokage? Whitebeard shook his head. I'm not interested to be the Hokage here. If you want to talk about dreams, I do have a few. Under Naruto's expectant gaze, Whitebeard spoke, family, treasure, and a pirate crew. That's my dream. I want to have more sons in this place. 
I want to bring back some treasure from this place, and I want to rebuild my pirate crew in this place. Whitebeard didn't care about titles like World's Strongest Man, Yonko, or Hokage. He only cared about these three things. Family was something he had longed for since childhood. So, after setting sail, he adopted many orphans from the seas and built a very large family. When he came to the ninja world, Whitebeard lost his family. He also couldn't find a way back home for now, so he wanted to find some family again. As for treasure, Whitebeard wasn't particularly keen on it, but he had always been thinking about his hometown, which had suffered great damage during the war. The treasure he plundered on the seas would be sent back to his hometown for its reconstruction. And pirate crew, Whitebeard believed that if he wasn't the captain of the Whitebeard Pirates, then he was not a Whitebeard. He wants to rebuild the Whitebeard Pirates in the ninja world. He looked forward to the day he would find his way back and bring the new Whitebeard Pirates to meet Marco and the others. Cough, 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 suddenly, Whitebeard coughed heavily, and his brows furrowed involuntarily. Pops, what's wrong? Naruto noticed something was off. Whitebeard shrugged it off with a wry smile. People do grow old. I'm already 72 years old. Just a minor health problem. While he said this out loud, he added a new goal for himself in his heart. Find a way to regain his health. He really wanted to see his foolish son grow up day by day. He didn't want to miss that moment. Speaking of which, this place is called the Ninja World. Is the medical level here good? Naruto, sensing that the concern in Naruto's eyes hadn't dissipated, Whitebeard changed the topic with a smile. Do you know what kind of conditions you need to meet to become the Hokage? Indeed, the word Hokage had a great impact on Naruto. The topic was successfully shifted. Naruto answered earnestly, You have to uphold the will of fire, be exceptionally skilled in ninjutsu, be a powerful ninja capable of ensuring everyone's safety, and you can't go hungry every day. I think going hungry won't make you the Hokage. Lastly, you need to earn the village's respect. Grandpa Hokage is highly respected by the villagers, and even his face is carved on the Hokage rock. Is that so? Whitebeard didn't understand what the will of fire was, but he could mostly categorize the rest as, whoever has the biggest fists becomes the Hokage. That seems simple enough. It looks similar to the pirates. Whoever has the biggest fist is the Yonko at this point, Naruto grumbled. But Grandpa Hokage is unwilling to teach me ninjutsu. He said he would enroll me in the ninja academy when I turn six and only then can I learn ninjutsu. Ninjutsu, is that the kind of trick where you breathe fire and water? Whitebeard laughed. Yurarara rarara. I thought it was something like devil fruit abilities. Devil fruit abilities? Naruto scratched his head. Whitebeard, his dad, sometimes used words that sounded new and strange to Naruto, leaving him puzzled about their meanings. Suddenly, Naruto's eyes lit up, and he turned to Whitebeard. Pops, are you a ninja too? You must be a very skilled ninja. Otherwise, you wouldn't have defeated those three Uchiha police so easily. Pops, can you teach me ninjutsu? Naruto asked eagerly. I'm not a ninja and I don't know ninjutsu, Whitebeard replied. Before Naruto could show disappointment, Whitebeard continued with a hearty laugh. But, I can teach you something else that won't be much worse than those ninja techniques. But, Naruto, Whitebeard's smile held a deeper meaning. Are you prepared? Of course. Naruto shifted from sitting to standing, trembling as he stood on Whitebeard's shoulder. He puffed out his chest and declared loudly, Pops, I'm Uzumaki Naruto, and I'm ready. Gururara. Whitebeard chuckled. Don't regret it, you foolish son of mine. One hour later, outside of Kanahagakur, Pops, are you really going to do this? This could kill me, right? Naruto's ambitions faded and his lips quivered in a pained expression. Is this really okay? What's wrong? Whitebeard furrowed his brow. That's how I trained back in the day. You see Naruto was suspended upside down from a tree, his legs tightly bound by ropes, forming an inverted posture. However, it wasn't a complete inversion. 
Naruto's body formed an L shape while his waist hung in the air. Pops, my stomach hurts so much. Naruto was drenched in cold sweat, and this position was unbearable after just one minute. His abdominal muscles were in pain, but he didn't dare to lower his back because beneath his lower back was a Murakuma Jairi. If he lowered his back, it would be cut in half. Hey, hey, hey! Are you trying to kill Naruto? Even the root members from the village don't go this crazy, right? Kakashi, hiding in the shadows, was breaking out in a cold sweat as he watched the scene unfold. Kakashi knew he hadn't paid much attention to Minato's son, but he felt a pang of guilt when he received the third Hokage's orders to look after Naruto. He didn't want anything to happen to Naruto, but, but the situation before him was far from safe. If he let his guard down for even a moment, Naruto's life could be in danger. Is this a training or a murder attempt? What? Suddenly, Kakashi's heart tightened. He saw that Whitebeard seemed to casually glance in his direction, and that glance caused Kakashi's pupils to contract. Did he find me? What kind of terrifying perception was this? Is he a sensory-type ninja? In fact, from the moment Kakashi arrived here, Whitebeard had noticed someone approaching, but he didn't expose Kakashi. To him, it was just a little devil peeking. Whitebeard said to Naruto, Foolish son, I've told you before, there's no room for regret. Just hold on for five more minutes. Five minutes? Naruto almost fainted upon hearing that. Pops, I'm only five years old. Naruto's abdomen muscles were about to tear, and he was in excruciating pain. The pain contorted his young face, but just when he was about to give up and lower his body, he felt something sharp touch his back, and his clothes were cut off. How, uh? Naruto was scared to death. There was a sword below. His strong survival instinct forced him to lift his body again, and the pain in his abdominal muscles intensified, causing tears to stream down his face. Gururara. Whitebeard encouraged Naruto. Foolish son, you're doing great. Don't underestimate yourself. When I was five years old, I could kill tigers with my bare hands. Five minutes may sound short, but for Naruto, it felt like an eternity. Pops, I can't take it anymore. Naruto cried out in despair, and he saw his back about to hit the Murakuma Jairi. Whitebeard reached out and caught him effortlessly. You're too weak, Whitebeard said with disdain. Even the weakest son on my ship is a hundred times stronger than you. Naruto couldn't even speak at this point, gasping for air with each breath. He had survived. Hiya. Did I? Did I make it through the last five minutes, Pops? Naruto finally managed to speak after catching his breath. Whitebeard replied, You endured for ten minutes. Good job. Hmm. Huh? Naruto was dumbfounded. Ten minutes? Foolish son, there's some mysterious power in your body. Whitebeard said this not without a reason. Naruto wasn't aware that he had nearly given up numerous times, and his abdominal muscles were on the verge of dissolving. At crucial moments, Whitebeard could see flashes of orange light, imperceptible to the naked eye, emanating from Naruto's body. This orange light carried an ominous aura and was tainted with an evil presence. This strange power allowed Naruto, who should have been unable to hold on, to persist. Whitebeard now had a better understanding of why Naruto was known as the Demon Fox. There was something within Naruto. That something was exceptionally strong. He also understood why the third Hokage was so concerned and eager to take Naruto away. Naruto's power was exceptionally formidable. It was like an ancient weapon, and Kanahagakure wanted to have this weapon under its control, which explained the strong reaction from the third Hokage. However, this gave rise to other questions. Since Naruto was not just an ordinary orphan, with his special identity and constitution, along with his parents being heroes of the Kanahagakure, why was he treated this way by the Kanahagakure? What was Kanahagakure's higher UPS thinking? Whitebeard couldn't comprehend it. If Naruto had been on the Marine's side, he would have been groomed as the next Marine hero at the Marine headquarters, given his special abilities. 
Whitebeard knew Sengoku very well, and he could see that his old rival would definitely do this. He saw a very clear difference, Nine Tails' power has been discovered. He realized that Naruto is the Jinchuriki. Kakashi took a deep breath, ready to intervene if Whitebeard made any suspicious moves to save Naruto. However, Whitebeard's next response left Kakashi baffled. Gururara, foolish son, you possess a very unique power. It seems like you don't even realize the potential within you, Whitebeard said ruffling Naruto's head. Your grandpa Hokage seems to be hiding something from you. My power? My potential? Naruto, lying on the ground, was puzzled but seemed to grasp the situation. Pops, are you saying I'm a genius? Gururara. Of course. You remind me of Marco, Whitebeard grinned. With your unique potential, it's a waste not to make the most of it. Marco? Naruto was taken aback. He's my other son and the captain of the first division of the Whitebeard Pirates, Whitebeard introduced. I see. So he's my big brother? Naruto exclaimed. So, I have another family member? Gururara. More than one. Whitebeard laughed. You have thousands of family members. Thousands? Naruto was shocked. But, activating your potential isn't easy, Whitebeard said, crossing his arms. He looked down at Naruto. It seems to be triggered when you're on the brink of death. So, what does that mean? Naruto suddenly had a bad feeling. It means, you foolish son, get up and continue your training. Whitebeard smiled like a demon, sending shivers down Naruto's spine. Meanwhile, at the root headquarters, Danzo-sama, we've found out why the Hokage is in such a hurry. It's because the Nine Tails is acting up, in a dimly lit place, a root ninja knelt and reported to Danzo. Danzo had been ignored by Haruzen Saratobi today, and he was naturally furious. However, he was also curious about what the Saratobi were up to, hence he sent root members to investigate. What he hadn't expected was that they would uncover this. Demon Fox, Namikaze Minato's son? Danzo squinted. He asked, Has the seal on the Nine Tails loosened? Danzo-sama, it seems the Nine Tails seal has not loosened, the root ninja replied. The reason for alarming the Hokage is that the boy has acknowledged an outsider as his father. Hmm. Danzo hadn't expected this turn of events. Minato's son, a Jinchuriki, acknowledging an outsider as his father? Danzo sneered, so it's like that. So, an outsider has laid his hands on the Jinchuriki? Monkey. Oh monkey. I told you to hand over the Jinchuriki to me for training, but you were so stubborn. We absolutely cannot let the Nine Tails Jinchuriki fall into someone else's hands. Danzo's eyes glimmered. The next day, a giant, over six meters tall, arrived in Kanahagakur, and this giant was in cahoots with the demon fox. This news spread quickly in the not-so-large Kanahagakur district, because too many people had seen Whitebeard and Naruto. Such news couldn't be hidden. Hey, Chuji! Nara Shikamaru, with his hands behind his head, yawned and said, This story is getting around. A giant over six meters tall, I've never seen anything like it. Crunch crunch asterisk Choji eating a bag of chips, replied lazily. These chips are pretty good. Aren't you listening to what I'm saying? Shikamaru had a perplexed expression, looking at his friend Choji turned his head in confusion. Weren't you talking about giant chips? Shikamaru sighed. Take your time with those chips. These two young kids treated such matters as casual topics of conversation. Shikamaru had a vague feeling that something was amiss. But because he is still young there were things even he couldn't understand as clearly as the Kanahagakur's higher-ups did. Meanwhile, in the Hyuga clan's compound, a giant named Whitebeard? Hyuga Hayashi, the clan head, certainly couldn't be unaware of such a major event. And he knew more details than the common people, especially in certain details. He has a good relationship with Uzumaki Naruto, had a confrontation with the Uchiha police force, and instantly defeated three Uchiha's chunin. He showed no fear in the presence of the third Hokage. Hyuga Hayashi furrowed his brows. 
A person of such strength appearing in Kanahigakur might be good or bad, but the key point was that he had a close relationship with the Jinchuriki. Moreover, the Hokage, apparently, had taken no measures against this person. Was it out of fear? Was this giant exceptionally powerful? Would a confrontation with him in Kanahigakur result in serious casualties? Or was there some other reason? In this regard, Hayashi wasn't too clear. But he knew that Kanahigakur had a new variable, especially one related to the Jinchuriki, which made it even more significant. In the Uchiha clan compound, idiot, that darn guy, what does he think of our Uchiha clan? He injured three of our clansmen, and he just pats his butt and acts like nothing happened. An elder from the Hawk faction of the Uchiha clan was fuming. The Hokage was there, but what did he do? He just sent our people to the hospital and did nothing else. He didn't even send anyone to notify our Uchiha clan. If it wasn't for one of our clansmen waking up and rushing back, we wouldn't even have known that this happened. Calm down, Uchiha Fugaku, the clan head, said. As far as I know, it was Gon, Fumi, and Chue, the three brothers, who wanted to take action against Naruto. Still, that's not a valid reason to injure our clan members. The elder interrupted Fugaku, saying, In this situation, of course, you have no reason to be angry. Gon, one, and Chue are my grandsons, after all. Uchiha Fugaku's brows furrowed. Fugaku, you're the clan head. Another elder from the Uchiha clan said leisurely, It's time to make a decision. You know, this is an excellent opportunity. Jinchuriki forming a bond with an outsider. You know what I mean by a great opportunity. Uchiha Fugaku fell into silence. Naturally, he understood. Ever since the Nine Tails incident, after Kanahagakur began marginalizing the Uchiha clan, the Uchiha clan started planning a coup. After all, no family could endure such injustice, especially not the mentally unstable Uchiha. Under pressure within the Uchiha clan, Uchiha Fugaku had to compromise and agree to plan and launch the coup. The plan was simple and well thought out. Control the Nine Tails rampage, and recreate the chaos of the Nine Tails incident. Then, seize the leadership of Kanahagakur. The Kanahagakur higher-ups accused the Uchiha clan of likely orchestrating the Nine Tails incident, right? Well, we'll show you we can orchestrate it. For this reason, Uchiha Fugaku even had his own son, Uchiha Itachi, placed in the umbu to monitor the movements of Kanahagakur's higher-up. However, nobody expected that his son would be so rebellious, strongly opposing these actions. The father-son relationship plummeted to freezing point. Uchiha Fugaku knew that the great opportunity the elder spoke of was none other than a prime chance to provoke the Jinchuriki into losing control. If they killed the outsider with whom the Jinchuriki had a deep bond, there was a high probability that the Jinchuriki would emotionally collapse causing the tailed beast seal to weaken, leading to a power surge and a revival of the Nine Tails incident. By then, Kanahagakur's higher-ups would be exhausted from dealing with the Nine Tails. Then Kanahagakur's power would be significantly diminished, and Uchiha Fugaku had the Manjiku Sharingan, which was the tailed beast's greatest nemesis. At that point, he would have two paths to choose from. One was to become a savior, saving Kanahagakur and gaining all its favor, then initiating the coup. The other was to betray the Kanahagakur's higher-ups when they were at their weakest, and they would take over Kanahagakur. Now isn't the best time, Uchiha Fugaku closed his eyes, Itachi will bring us the information. We'll wait for Itachi's intelligence. Oomph. Indecisive. The elder left angrily with a dark expression. The other elder said, Fugaku, Itachi is not to be trusted. He has always been reluctant to get involved. The bond of the Jinchuriki must be broken, and it must be done in front of the Jinchuriki. After standing up, he continued speaking as he left. You don't want the Uchiha clan to decline further, do you? Uchiha Fugaku remained silent. In the center of the storm that engulfed the entire Kanahagakur, Whitebeard continued without much awareness or perhaps he simply didn't care. After all, 
whether it was in the shinobi world or the new world of the Grand Line, Whitebeard had always been at the center of world-changing events. This was his daily life. Foolish son, you ran for less than two kilometers and already puked? Whitebeard grabbed the Murakuma Jairi and swung it towards Naruto. Even if you vomit, keep running. Gurerarara. Aha. Naruto screamed in terror, quickening his pace, narrowly avoiding the blade of the cloud cutter. He had never imagined that the road to becoming Hokage would be this hard. His pops wasn't joking, he was deadly serious. Gurarara. Foolish son, don't forget, you'll be enrolling in the Ninja Academy next year. With your weak physique, can you even get in? Don't you dare embarrass me and tarnish my reputation. Whitebeard swung the severed Murakuma Jairi again, and this time, it even cut off a few hairs from the back of Naruto's head. The blade's gust of wind resembled a tempest, pushing Naruto forward with his face turning pale. Naruto had no choice but to sprint forward, his body exhausted, his legs aching and cramping. He had to crawl to keep moving, as he pushed himself to the brink of death. Naruto's body released not just sweat from exhaustion but also tears of fear. Inside a barbecue restaurant belonging to the Akimichi clan, Naruto devoured food like a starved wolf, shoving anything he saw into his mouth. He cursed that his teeth were not sharp enough as he chewed each meat chunk several times before swallowing. He is really hungry. Whitebeard didn't take Naruto to a Chiraku ramen but instead found a barbecue restaurant. Whitebeard believed that Naruto needed to grow his body, especially with this intense training regimen. How could he do that without eating meat? He needed to eat meat and a lot of it. At the same time, Whitebeard indulged in the Akimichi clan's secret barbecue. In his hand was a piece of meat that looked larger than a whole pig. With each bite, the sauce seeped out of the meat. The flavors, the secret sauce, and the meat exploded on his taste buds, making Whitebeard's eyes light up. Gurarara, this barbecue place is interesting. Whitebeard finished the meat in a few bites and looked at the stunned Akimichi chef. He suddenly extended an invitation. I happen to need a son who can cook. Are you interested in becoming my son? The chef, who was staring at the giant in disbelief, and completely dumbfounded upon hearing this. He was already in his forties, and his wife had given birth to a daughter. His daughter was even a chunin in Kanoha. In such circumstances, someone was actually asking him to become their son? Is this some kind of joke? Gurarara. It seems like you're not very interested. Whitebeard observed the greenish expression on the chef's face and immediately understood his thoughts. Whitebeard was well aware that in the Grand Line, he was indeed a famous figure. But in Kanoha, he was only known as a giant. If they were out on the sea it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that out of 10,000 people, only one would have the audacity to refuse Whitebeard's invitation. This one person would be a rebellious individual, rejecting Whitebeard's offer. This wasn't an exaggeration, the new world was a chaotic place with countless individuals living on the edge once Whitebeard accepted someone as his son. He would guarantee that person's safety for life, even until Whitebeard's own death. Anyone who wanted to live a good life in the new world wouldn't refuse Whitebeard's invitation. Even if the world's strongest individual is a pirate, as long as it helps people survive, what does it matter if they're a pirate? Unfortunately, Whitebeard hadn't made a name for himself in the ninja world. This title didn't seem to work here. Chuji, when did your family's barbecue restaurant hang such a big banner? It wasn't there yesterday. A voice suddenly chimed in, sounding like a kid trying to sound mature but still having a distinctly youthful voice. Crunch Crunch Akimichi Chuji munched on potato chips as he responded. Maybe they're running some kind of big promotion. Just as Choji was about to enter the restaurant, suddenly his arm was grabbed by Shikamaru. In a moment of stumbling, Choji's grip on the bag of potato chips nearly sent them spilling to the ground. He quickly clutched the bag, half-complainingly telling Shikamaru, Shikamaru, this is my last bag of chips for the day. You fool. That's not a promotion at all. 
Shikamaru, with an exasperated tone, said, Tilt your head up a bit, that's someone's back. Huh. Chuji raised his head in surprise and exclaimed, Really? It's the giant. Shikamaru took a deep breath, appearing both nervous and helpless. How could I be this unlucky? Nobody could have expected that the giant who was the center of attention in Kanoha would suddenly appear right before them. Honestly, Shikamaru had never seen a person this tall before. He had come across descriptions of individuals with gigantism in books, but those individuals were at most three meters tall, and none of them had a long life. The giant in front of them was definitely not a gigantism patient, because his height far exceeded four meters. Even if he sat on the ground, one could estimate his height to be no less than six meters. How surprising! Shikamaru, there's a person with golden hair over there. Chuji, who noticed this while Shikamaru was engrossed in eating, exclaimed. Looking at the pieces of barbecue meat displayed in front of Naruto and Whitebeard, Choji felt that his potato chips no longer tasted good. His eyes were fixed on the barbecue, and he couldn't stop drooling. Isn't that Uzumaki Naruto? Shikamaru pondered for a moment. I remember. Some of the adults in our clan mentioned him. Hey, Chuji, don't go over there. Shikamaru suddenly realized that Chuji had broken free from his grip, was enticed by the barbecue, and was heading straight for the barbecue restaurant. This, Shikamaru had a headache. Is this guy's brain made of barbecue? He's such a bother. He gritted his teeth and followed Chuji. Compared to Whitebeard's massive size, the two kids looked like two tiny mice passing by. Whitebeard briefly glanced at them. He had initially wanted to ignore the two kids, but Akimichi Chuji held out the remaining half of his bag of potato chips to Whitebeard, staring at the mountain of barbecue in front of him, and his mouth watered uncontrollably. He said, Can I trade this bag of potato chips for some barbecue? Even though I've eaten half of it, it's... Uh, still good. Before Choji could finish his sentence, Shikamaru, who had rushed over and was now dragging Chuji away, covered his mouth. Being the focus of Whitebeard's gaze put immense pressure on Shikamaru. He forced a smile and said, Sorry. My friend isn't thinking clearly right now. We've disturbed your meal. Please just ignore us, we'll leave right away. Shikamaru struggled to pull Chuji out. It wasn't an easy task, and he was quite tired. At this moment, Whitebeard noticed that Naruto was absent-mindedly playing with his barbecue while gazing at the two kids. Whitebeard could see Naruto's loneliness, the longing for friendship that he couldn't hide. He chuckled and asked, do you want to play with those kids? Naruto hastily shook his head, feeling down. The kids in the village don't want to play with me. Seeing Naruto's expression, Whitebeard's judgment of the third Hokage dropped to the bottom of the abyss. If it weren't for the inaction of that Hokage, how could his foolish son have no friends at all? Pops, I'm full, Naruto said with a bit less appetite. Gururarara. Whitebeard laughed heartily. Don't worry, my foolish son. When your old man adopts a few more silly kids, you'll have enough friends, really? Naruto's eyes lit up. Gururarara. Of course. When did I lie to you? Whitebeard ruffled Naruto's hair. Huh? Hey, you haven't paid. The chef at the barbecue restaurant was dumbfounded. Were this strange father and son really leaving without paying? Let that dog pay. Whitebeard said without even turning back. A dog. The chef really looked around for a moment and spotted a dog at the entrance of the shop. No, how can a dog pay? Bang. Before the sentence could even finish, a small dog at the shop's entrance suddenly emitted a puff of smoke, revealing Kakashi's figure. I've been found out, huh? Kakashi looked at Whitebeard's back. Is the transformation jutsu useless for him? He took out his wallet to pay. Kakashi had no psychological burden, and he didn't mind using his own money. After all, he could get reimbursed later. On the other side, Shikamaru, who was trying to drag Chuji away to avoid trouble, suddenly found himself shrouded in a shadow. Beads of sweat formed on his forehead, and his face bore an expression of resignation. Gururarara, you two kids, my son needs a playmate, 
and I think you two are quite suitable. Whitebeard exclaimed. Shikamaru. Gururarara. Naruto, look, you've got friends now. Whitebeard carried Mirakamajiri on his shoulder and watched the three little kids walking ahead with a hearty laugh. Um, hi. I'm Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto seemed a bit awkward. I'm Chuji. Akimichi Chuji. Chuji raised his chubby hand and exclaimed with amazement, Naruto, you're amazing. I've never seen anyone eat so much barbecue before. Huh. Naruto was momentarily surprised. Chuji's enthusiasm exceeded his expectations, and he hadn't even mentioned the word demon fox. In reality, Naruto was prepared to be called a demon fox, but it didn't happen. Chuji was quite friendly, scratching his head and saying, I saw you eating barbecue outside earlier. You ate as much as me. Isn't that an impressive feat? Nara Shikamaru. Shikamaru introduced himself with a grimace, clearly showing a lack of enthusiasm. His instincts told him not to get too close to any kind of trouble. What he disliked the most was troublesome situations, and a giant who had stirred up a huge commotion was the very embodiment of trouble in his eyes. But... The enormous sword behind him sparkled with a chilling light in the sunlight, making Shikamaru follow his heart. Gururarara, gloomy kid, you seem somewhat unwilling, huh? Whitebeard chuckled, half-joking. Could it be that you don't want to be friends with Naruto? Naruto, let's be friends. Shikamaru was so startled that he shivered, and he chose to enthusiastically say to Naruto, Sometimes, the smarter you were, the more you knew your own situation, and that made you more flexible, the more you follow your heart. Ah! Uh -uh. Really? Naruto was both surprised and delighted, feeling a bit overwhelmed. Of course it's true, Shikamaru said, struggling to put on a forced smile. Naruto couldn't help but say weakly, but I'm the demon fox. It, it doesn't matter, Shikamaru's mouth trembled, and he could feel a chill behind him. Meanwhile, Chuji remained oblivious to the situation they were facing. He reached into his half-eaten bag of potato chips, pulled out a handful, and handed them to Naruto with a genuine and kind smile. Since Shikamaru invited you to be friends, then we're friends now. Hey, don't just say it casually. Can't you see I'm just trying to end this as soon as possible? Shikamaru's eyelids were twitching. He was thinking of quickly getting past this giant behind him, going home and avoiding this street for a few days. But Chuji's actions left Shikamaru bewildered. Huh? Hey, wait, why are you crying? Shikamaru suddenly noticed someone else who was causing him a headache. He looked at Naruto, who was shedding tears and snot, and helplessly said, Could you please stop crying? I really can't stand it when people cry. I am just excited. Naruto sniffed and wiped away his tears. He explained, I've never had a friend from childhood to now. The people in the village don't want to be near me. Even when I tried to buy things, they wouldn't let me into their stores. If I sneaked in, they would kick me out, Naruto continued. Chuji scratched his head, puzzled. Didn't your parents do anything about it? Naruto lowered his head. I, I didn't have parents before. Stupid Chuji, can't you watch your words? Shikamaru glared at Chuji. Stop picking at other people's scars. As a member of the Nara clan, even though Shikamaru was only five years old this year, his astonishing IQ of 200 allowed him to understand what the elders in his clan were saying. He had heard the clan elders discussing and mentioning Uzumaki Naruto, so he had a basic understanding of Naruto from an early age. He knew that Naruto was the Jinchuriki, housing a fearsome monster inside him. He also knew that Naruto's parents were once heroes of Kanahigakure but had sacrificed themselves for some reason. Shikamaru didn't know much, but he knew more than his peers. Hey, hey, stop crying like a girl, it's so annoying. Shikamaru turned away and took something out, handing it over to Naruto. Naruto looked at the handkerchief in front of him and then at Shikamaru, who had turned his face away. Use it to wipe away your tears and don't use it for your snot. It's for tears only, Shikamaru said, his eyes not on Naruto, but he added, make sure to give it back to me. 
It's a birthday gift from my mom. Okay, okay, Naruto replied. Time passed. As night fell, Naruto had returned home. His house was very small, quite different from the common perception of an orphan of a hero. It was a very ordinary and even quite old one-bedroom apartment. The house was neatly arranged, but Naruto certainly didn't do it himself. It was Whitebeard who had forced him to tidy up. In Whitebeard's words, even if he couldn't keep his place clean, how could he be a Hokage? So, last night, Naruto cleaned up his home. After taking a bath, Naruto lay in bed for a long time, unable to sleep. He suddenly sat up, ran to the window, and peered outside. He could see Whitebeard, his dad, sitting directly on the road, using the wall as a backrest, resting with his eyes closed. Whitebeard seemed to sense something, and he opened his eyes and looked up. Gururara, brat, it's late at night. Is there something you want to say? Whitebeard had lived in even harsher conditions, so sleeping on the road was nothing to him. Pops, thank you. Naruto grinned. Go to sleep, you idiot. You have to get up at five tomorrow for training. If you're even a minute late, I'll double your training. Whitebeard ordered. Okay. Naruto happily lay back down on the bed. Today, he not only endured his dad's special training, feeling his body getting stronger, but he also made two friends, Nara Shikamaru and Akimichi Chuji. He even got to eat a lot of barbecue it was his first time eating so much. Naruto was very satisfied today, he realized that his dad could give him something that Grandpa Hokage couldn't. Grandpa Hokage never invited him to eat barbecue, never helped him make friends in the village, and always refused Naruto to teach him ninjutsu however. His dad, Whitebeard, had given him all of these things. Is this what it feels like to have a father? Naruto fell into a deep sleep, not sensing anything unusual outside. He soon began to snore lightly. Outside, Whitebeard clicked his tongue and stood up, closing the window for his stupid son. Then, he turned around and looked at the dark knight, Gururara. This village doesn't seem to welcome me, huh? You bunch of rats hiding in the shadows, don't you know about something called observation hockey? With the perception of observation hockey, Whitebeard easily detected the root ninja hiding in the darkness. They had nowhere to hide. As Whitebeard's words fell, more than a dozen figures appeared from all directions. Front, back, left, and right. Each person is wearing a mask although they are slightly different from the masks worn by the umbu. Some stood on the buildings, while others squatted on electric poles. Hidden behind their masks, their eyes were fixed on Whitebeard, and there was no emotion in their eyes. The air was filled with a chilling atmosphere. Kakashi, who had been assigned to monitor Naruto by the third Hokage, knew that Whitebeard had discovered him a long time ago, but he never showed up and hid beside Naruto. But at this moment, he had no choice but to reveal himself again. Kakashi was currently standing on the balcony of Naruto's residence. He first looked back at Naruto, who was fast asleep. Then he glanced at the root ninjas. An unwelcome visitor, Kakashi muttered to himself. But it seems they're not after Naruto. They're targeting Whitebeard. What the hell is this Shimura Danzo guy up to? Kakashi had no favorable opinion of Danzo, or rather, the normal ninja of Konoha had no high opinion of Danzo. Everyone had heard rumors about some of the things Root had done. Hataki Kakashi, suddenly, a voice came from not far away, and the one who speak was one of the Root ninjas. This is the order of Danzo-sama. If you interfere, we'll consider you an enemy. Kakashi's expression turned cold, and he replied dispassionately, can I take what you said as a threat to me? It's up to you. The response from the root ninja was exceptionally indifferent. They seemed devoid of emotion. They are more like machines. Gururara. Brat, so you're not with them, huh? But they seem to know you. What a mess this Kanoha village is, Whitebeard said, surrounded by a dozen root ninjas. Even an elite Jounin needed to be extremely vigilant in such a situation to avoid becoming dead meat. But Whitebeard showed no sign of vigilance. He was not the least bit serious. Whitebeard looked around, 
his smile growing wider. Gurerara, just a dozen of you? Not even enough to warm me up. Arrogant, said the leader among the root ninja. His tone was cold. Danzo-sama has ordered us not to let the Jinchuriki fall into the hands of foreign villages. Any unstable factors must be eliminated. Kill him. In an instant, sharp sounds of projectiles cutting through the air came from the night, and countless shuriken were difficult to follow in the dark. Some of the root ninjas took the opportunity to form hand seals rapidly. Earth Release Small yellow spring swamp. In the blink of an eye, the ground beneath Whitebeard's feet turned into a muddy swamp, and his massive body slowly sank. His movement seemed constrained. Countless shuriken were already coming into him, but Whitebeard stood firm. Clang, 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 clang. The continuous collision sounds echoed and sparks splintered off his body. Every shuriken thrown at him was deflected by his skin. Gururarara. Marine cannons couldn't leave a mark on me and these little darts thrown by hand are too weak. Whitebeard laughed heartily. To the astonishment of the root ninja, he lifted his foot and effortlessly broke free from the swamp. Ninjas are quite interesting. Not only can they breathe fire and spit water, but they can also control the earth, huh? Whitebeard swung his sword mightily. Buzz. The air in front of him became intensely turbulent under the force of that single strike, and the terrifying pressure made the nearest root ninja's face pale. That blow was exceptionally fierce. Earth release. Earth wall. A thick earthen wall shot up from the ground, and the pressure from Whitebeard's strike fell onto the wall, shattering it. The root ninja hiding behind the wall were also sent flying by that force. Suddenly Whitebeard reached behind his neck in a mosquito-catching posture and caught a root ninja who was trying to ambush him. The terrifying grip made the ninja wince in pain, causing even his ninja blade to fall to the ground. Kid, I don't want to have any scars on my back. Crack. The sound of bones shattering made others shudder. As Whitebeard loosened his grip, the root ninja fell apart like soft mud and rotten meat. This was the first person Whitebeard had killed since his arrival in the ninja world. As for the psychological pressure of taking a life, there was none. Did the mighty Yonko never kill someone before? Don't joke around. Damn it. The expressions under the masks of the root ninja finally showed some signs of disturbance, and it was an ugly sight. After a few jumps, they stood together in unison. Fire release. Flame meteor. The first few root ninjas at the front simultaneously unleashed fire release jutsu, and torrents of flames gathered together reaching the level of an A-rank jutsu. The flames even began to spread and consume some of the nearby civilian buildings. Wind release, great breakthrough. The root ninja standing at the back didn't hesitate and added a few wind release ninjutsu. The roaring flames became even more formidable, and it had already started affecting some residential buildings in the vicinity. Some of the sleeping civilians in Kanoha were puzzled by the sudden commotion outside. When they opened their eyes, they were horrified. It's on fire. A big fire. Are these people insane? Kakashi's expression changed abruptly. He knew that if he didn't act now, the torrent of flames would reach Naruto's location. Were these root members out of their minds? Kakashi quickly formed hand seals, water, but he only managed to form one seal before his movements froze because he witnessed an unforgettable scene unfold right before his eyes. In front of him, Masked kids, you've gone too far. Whitebeard's eyes flashed with murderous intent, as the world's recognized strongest man of the sea. He didn't care about these attacks directed at him. After all, he wanted to see what level these jutsu from the shinobi world were at. Could they break through his physical defenses? But if the attack might endanger Naruto, Whitebeard would never forgive them. He, during the Summit War, he had already lost many family members. Now, in this ninja world, he couldn't afford to lose another family member. Facing the surging flames, Whitebeard's right fist unleashed a pulsating shockwave. The explosive intent was like a tsunami. It makes people look like they are floating in the sea. 
Whitebeard lightly clenched his fist. And boom! The power of the Quake Quake fruit was displayed in the ninja world for the first time. White atmospheric cracks radiated outward from the center of Whitebeard's right fist, enveloping a large area in an instant. Crack, like the sound of shattering glass, the raging winds and flames suddenly came to a halt. The movements of the dozen root ninjas froze. In the next moment, the surroundings shook intensely, the strong vibration tore the earth apart, and cracks appeared on the walls of houses. The entire Kanoha village trembled noticeably. The combination of fire and wind released jutsu was dispersed in the blink of an eye. The shockwave touched the dozen or so root ninjas who had yet to react. Bang! Their bodies are like fireworks that are set on fire directly shattered. Blood splatters. Blown away. Although Kakashi didn't know much about the root, among the dozen root ninjas, he felt that at least two of them were Jounin. The rest of the root members were either special Jounin or Chunin, and there wasn't a single Jenin among them. But what did he see? Isn't this too exaggerated? Kakashi felt a dryness in his mouth as he watched Whitebeard deliver a single punch into the air. The atmosphere seemed to shatter into pieces with a clear, glass-breaking sound. It was definitely not an illusion. The violent shaking of the air caused a strong wind, and the buildings beneath their feet trembled slightly. This was most likely the result of Whitebeard's strange abilities. Otherwise, Naruto's house wouldn't just experience a slight tremor, it would be filled with cracks, just like the other buildings. This single punch affected the entire street. Not a single building remained unscathed, and not an inch of land was left undamaged. As far as the eye could see, it was a scene of devastation. Fire. Earthquake. The residents on the street panicked, rushing out of their homes. How could there be a sudden earthquake? It's been years since the last one. When they ran outside, they saw the widespread destruction. They also saw a giant standing there. They were so shocked that they didn't dare to make a sound. The aura emanating from that giant made them shiver as if they had turned into ants, and the giant was a mammoth. The sense of oppression was overwhelming. Kakashi glanced at the civilians and felt a headache coming on. I wonder if anyone got caught up in this. Those under the command of Shimura Danzo don't seem to care about the consequences of their actions on Kanoha Village. And now, all of them, Kakashi widened his expressionless eye. Are they all dead? The ground was stained with crimson blood, making it even more striking. A dozen of root ninjas were blasted into pieces. Not a complete corpse was left. Kakashi turned to look at Naruto in the room and found that he had not been awakened by the commotion outside. This kid sleeps like a log. Maybe he's just too tired from the day. He looked back at Whitebeard's figure. At that moment, Kakashi realized that the new father recognized by Naruto was even more powerful than anyone had imagined. Perhaps this Whitebeard could fight the Hokage? Hmm? An earthquake. At the same time, Shimura Danzo, who was waiting for news from the Yenbu assassination squad, felt a slight tremor in the ground. His brow furrowed deeply. For some reason, he had a bad feeling. Could it be the root ninjas couldn't handle that white beard? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. Danzo shook his head. Two Jounin, two special Jounin, and ten Chunin ninjas. With a squad like this, even experienced elite Jounin ninjas would probably have to sacrifice their lives if they encountered them. He didn't believe that an outsider had the strength to escape from the root ninjas. If the other party was really that powerful, and with so many spies planted in the village by the Umbu, allowing such a powerful outsider to enter the village and even establish a bond with the Jinchuriki, what were they doing? It was a serious dereliction of duty. Saratobi, you've grown old and are no longer the ninja you once were, Danzo muttered, gazing at the candlelight, his expression unchanged. But his ambitious eyes showed that he was determined. Since you can't make certain decisions, I'll make them for you. He dispatched the route to assassinate Whitebeard without informing Saratobi Hiruzen. This was an unauthorized action from the route. 
Danzo believed he was doing the right thing. I'm doing it for the sake of Kanoha. In his office, Saratobi Hiruzen was working late, but the sudden tremor caused his pen to break. He perked up his ears and faintly sensed something in the distance. Hiruzen's expression changed. He dropped the broken pen and rushed to the window. He looked at the scene in the distance, and his expression wasn't very pleasant. He addressed the heir to his side, Itachi. Go check what's happening at Naruto's place. If there's trouble, help Kakashi to deal with it. Understood. Uchiha Itachi, who had just turned 11 last month and had become a new member of the Umbu, responded from beneath his Umbu mask. A nearly invisible black shadow passed by the window, resembling a raven, heading towards Naruto's house. Back in the office, Hiruzen's expression grew stronger. In the dim moonlight, he could see the street in the distance, shrouded in a faint dust cloud. That was where Naruto lived. Something must happen. Despite having a frail body, they can breathe fire, control water, and manipulate earth and strong winds. Whitebeard remarked, clicking his tongue in amazement. These shinobi in the ninja world are all so peculiar. With that said, Whitebeard no longer paid attention to the scattered remains. He turned to Kakashi and asked, White-haired brat, are you planning to assassinate me too? No. Kakashi quickly responded. The Hokage only tasked me with protecting Naruto. There were no other orders given. He immediately distanced himself from the root members. He didn't want to experience the terrifying power of Whitebeard's punch, which reminded him of Lady Tsunade. Then clean up this mess. Whitebeard's tone was authoritative. Gurarara. Since you've accepted that ridiculous Hokage's order, I assume you don't want Naruto to wake up and see that the ground is filled with corpse, do you? Kakashi wanted to say something to Whitebeard. I'm not a battlefield janitor. I've never done such work, but the look in Whitebeard's eyes made him swallow his words. I'll clean it up, Kakashi mumbled to himself. He figured a few subtle water-release jutsu would be enough to wash away the root members' remains into the sewer. After all, these root members were shrouded in the dark side of the village, and many didn't even have names. Concealed behind masks during their lifetime after death, they are disposed of in the sewers. Yes, that seemed fitting. White-haired brat, you seem like someone who can manipulate earth, right? Whitebeard directed another command, then fixed the cracks in the ground. As for the cracked walls, they can stay that way. It's the price they pay for bullying my son. Hey, isn't that taking it too far? I'm not some maid with white hair, and yet I'm being asked to do this menial work? Kakashi's head was filled with black lines. But, but he did it anyway. Kakashi performed several earth-release jutsu to repair the ground. He felt like a jounin ninja working as a construction laborer. Fortunately, there were no people he knew nearby and no one who knew him. This way, he wouldn't lose too much face, right? Kakashi Senpai? Suddenly, a familiar voice came from behind. The Hokage has sent me to see what's going on. It was Itachi, hidden behind the Umbu mask. Senpai, what are you doing? Itachi seemed puzzled. Kakashi. Damn it. Even though Uchiha Itachi was just 11 years old this year and only a newcomer in the Umbu, he had already gained recognition from Saratobi Hiruzen, the third Hokage. It wasn't only because of his young age and impressive strength, but also because he was Uchiha Fugaku's son. His identity is too special. Itachi and Kakashi were acquaintances, often responsible for guarding Saratobi Hiruzen when not on missions. That's why, the moment Itachi arrived, he addressed Kakashi as senpai. He was genuinely puzzled about Kakashi's use of earth release here. Soon, Itachi noticed a tall figure beside Kakashi. Due to the person's massive size, he initially mistook them for two electricity poles sticking out of the ground. Upon closer inspection, he realized that they were human legs. It was only when he looked upward that he realized it was a human being. This, oh, this is the giant that the Hokage had mentioned. Cough, cough. Itachi, you came just in time. Kakashi said nonchalantly and patted Itachi on the shoulder. 
I need you to help me with something here, senpai. I'm wearing an umbu mask. Itachi reminded him in a low voice. Don't call me by name. Okay, oh. Itachi, you can help me patch up the ground here. I'll use earth release to fill it, and you can use fire release to dry the mud. Kakashi replied, complying with Itachi's request but quickly forgetting about it. Itachi. Itachi, taking a deep breath, and asked. Senpai, I was instructed by the Hokage to come and see what's happening here. He surveyed the widespread destruction around them and then glanced at the giant figure. His expression grew serious. Was there a battle here? Is there a fight here? Kakashi Senpai, did you fight with that giant? Don't talk nonsense, it wasn't me, it was the Root. Kakashi immediately clarified himself from the incident. Root. Itachi looked puzzled. I haven't seen any Root members. They're down there, Kakashi pointed to the sewer. His expression remained as unchanging as a dead fish as he said, You can go inside and search. Maybe you'll find their body parts or pieces of their mask Itachi. Although Kakashi said it somewhat softly, the Uchiha Itachi was not a fool, and he immediately heard that all of the root ninjas were dead, died at the hands of this giant in a flash Itachi's eyes widened, and he quickly reached for his kanai. However, Kakashi held his hand back. In response to Itachi's confused look, Kakashi explained, Root acted without the Hokage's orders. Their attack nearly involved Naruto. But they killed Konoha Ninja. Itachi couldn't understand why Kakashi had stood by and watched Root members die. Kakashi's dead fish eyes showed no emotion, but he kept a firm grip on Itachi's hand. Kakashi said to Itachi, Do not start a conflict with Whitebeard without orders from Hokage. Itachi, you're part of the Umbu. Their death is none of your business. They acted without Hokage's orders, and it's none of your business if they die as a result. I'm telling you this because you're still a rookie. Under normal circumstances, Kakashi wouldn't have been this talkative. If Itachi wanted to do something, it was none of his business. However, tonight was different. Itachi and Kakashi were both Umbu members. If Itachi made a move against the giant, Kakashi would have no choice but to intervene, and they might end up fighting the giant together. Even though he hadn't faced the Whitebeard directly, but after witnessing the power Whitebeard displayed on multiple occasions, Kakashi felt it was better not to mess with this person. He wasn't a missing Nin from Kanahagakur, and it wasn't a time of war, and the third Hokage hadn't issued any orders. There was no personal grudge to settle either. How much was a month's salary anyway? Was it worth risking his life? Guerrero Rara Whitebeard was examining Itachi with interest. Why are you two kids talking loudly? Did you here to take my life too? No, he's just here to see what's going on, Kakashi said to Whitebeard. Kakashi pulled the Uchiha aside. We are not from the same department as them, Kakashi replied. Itachi didn't say anything. He could tell that Kakashi was afraid of this giant, and that puzzled him. Itachi had a fairly good understanding of who Kakashi was, someone who could make Kakashi feel like this. He was undoubtedly a dangerous person. So, he was forcibly held back by Kakashi, and Itachi had no choice but to help Kakashi clean up the area. Then, he didn't stay any longer and headed straight for the Hokage's office. Itachi didn't take the usual route. He didn't use the main entrance but crawled in through the Hokage's office window. He found the third Hokage smoking a cigarette. The whole office was filled with smoke. Itachi, why are you coming back so late? Saratobi Hiruzen frowned and asked. It's been almost half an hour. Kanoha isn't that big, and a round trip shouldn't take this long, right? Did you run into something? Is Naruto okay? Hokage-sama, Facing a series of questions from Saratobi Hiruzen, Uchiha Itachi reported truthfully, the Jinchuriki is in good condition, but indeed, an unexpected incident occurred. He conveyed all the intelligence he received from Kakashi, including but not limited to the Root's attempt to assassinate Whitebeard and how Whitebeard powerfully dealt with the Root Ninja. Hearing this, his brows furrowed even tighter. A punch with white light, Killing dozens of root ninjas in an instant from a distance? 
It sounded a bit like Anoki's dust release, but upon closer inspection, it didn't seem like dust release. Was it a special ninjutsu, similar to the Raisingan? Whitebeard's incredible strength raised another level in Saratobi Hiruzen's eyes, making it seem more and more challenging, and Danzo, Saratobi Hiruzen felt a headache. He actually ignored me and directly ordered Root to go after Whitebeard. Does he still see me as the Hokage here? The key point is Danzo was too arrogant, thinking that this was Kanahagakure's home ground and sending an assassination squad to eliminate an outsider. But the assassination squad was wiped out entirely, and it caused quite a commotion. Saratobi Hiruzen was a bit irritated. He didn't like the feeling of not being in control, even if the person involved was also a high-ranking Kanoha official. Moreover, Danzo's subordinates almost harmed Naruto. What if they released the Nine Tails? What would they do? Who would clean up the mess? Danzo is becoming more impatient, Saratobi Hiruzen said. It seems that some of Root's privileges should be slightly restricted and reduced. In this high-level political game, Uchiha Itachi pretended not to hear. But he didn't expect. Saratobi Hiruzen suddenly asked him, Itachi, how do you view the recent unusual behavior of the Uchiha clan? Uchiha Itachi was slightly surprised. He lowered his head and said, The Uchiha clan? Before he could finish his sentence, Saratobi Hiruzen interrupted, I won't make it difficult for you. If things can be resolved through negotiation, there's no need to use simple means. He emphasized, Itachi, the future of the Uchiha clan is in your hands and those young people like Shursue. Don't let those shadowy figures influence you. Sarutobi Hiruzen hinted at something. Yes, Hokage-sama. In the late hours of the night, after removing the Umbu mask, Itachi Uchiha silently returned to the Uchiha clan's compound. He moved with utmost stealth, careful not to disturb those asleep. Suddenly swoosh, a swooshing sound came from his right. Itachi's expression remained unchanged as he swiftly caught a wooden shuriken. It was a wooden shuriken thrown at him by none other than Uchiha Sasuke. Itachi expertly threw it back, and in the darkness, he heard a panicked cry, Ha! Ah, big brother, you hit my eye. It hurts. It hurts. My eye. What? Itachi's expression shifted to surprise as he rushed to Sasuke's side. Sasuke, are you okay? I didn't mean to. Bang. The wooden kunai was pressed against the Itachi's throat, and Sasuke Uchiha, who was only five years old, had a victorious and mischievous smile on his young face. He he, didn't expect that, did you? You fell for it. Father once said that using cunning and deception is normal for a ninja. If this wooden kunai were made of iron, you'd be dead now. Is that so? Itachi questioned, a hand gently squeezing Sasuke's small head and ruffling his hair. Itachi's teasing voice came from behind Sasuke. My foolish little brother, take a closer look at what's in front of you. Huff. With a sudden poof, the Itachi that Sasuke had stopped with the wooden kunai vanished. It was a clone. Itachi dismissed his doubts, and let a small smile grace his lips, saying, If you want to ambush me, you'll have to wait another ten years. Oomph. Big brother, it's not fair to pick on a kid with ninjutsu snap. Whack. Itachi flicked Sasuke's forehead. Silly Sasuke, what kind of ninja doesn't use ninjutsu? Plus, it's almost dawn and you're not sleeping? Sasuke grumbled. I want to sleep with my brother. You're turning five soon. Half a year from now, you'll be entering the ninja academy, and you need to mature a little. Then big brother, teach me Uchiha clan techniques, and I'll become mature. Sasuke couldn't hide his little thoughts. Itachi frowned. Father promised to teach you the great fireball jutsu after you join the academy. You're too young for ninjutsu right now. Can't I study a year earlier? Sasuke complained. Aren't we Uchiha different from everyone else? No. Itachi declined. Sasuke didn't give up. Then, can you teach me shuriken and kanai throwing? Teaching throwing techniques, huh? Itachi considered. Alright, I'm quite busy lately, but I'll take a day off tomorrow to train you. 
Only tomorrow, though. If you don't learn by then, I won't teach you anymore. Sasuke cheered. Great. Can we practice at the clan's training grounds? Itachi pondered. He didn't want to stay around the clan during the day, as tensions had been rising. If he stays here during the day, he is sure to get into trouble. How about the outskirts? We'll have a little camping trip while I make your favorite rice balls. Yay! Sasuke exclaimed. The next day, at five in the morning, it is still dark this is Whitebeard's third day in Kanoha. On the first day, he injured an Umbu ninja, adopted Naruto as his son, fought three Uchiha, confronted the Hokage, had a feast at Ichiraku Ramen, and started special training with Naruto. On the second day, he still trained Naruto and took him to eat barbecue, find two new friends for Naruto, defeat over a dozen root ninjas, and nearly destroy a whole street in Kanoha. On the third day, he woke up from his sleep. Gururara, you foolish son, get up. Life can't be wasted in bed, especially when you promise to become Hokage. Whitebeard's thunderous voice startled Naruto, causing him to jump out of bed. All right, pops, I'll come after I wash up. Naruto knew what would happen if he lazed in bed with his father around. After that, he quickly put on clothes. With his hair in disarray, he hurriedly made his way out. Suppressing a yawn, he stood upright before Whitebeard, looking like a schoolboy reluctantly facing early morning drills. Gururara, let's go to our usual training spot. Whitebeard laughed. But this time, you'll run there yourself? Huh. Naruto was shocked. But, Pops, that's over 10 kilometers. In a straight line, it wasn't that far, but navigating through the village's streets made it quite far. What? What's wrong? Giving up already? Whitebeard narrowed his eyes and flexed his muscles, ready to deliver the fist of love to Naruto. No. Naruto shivered. I'll run. Gururara. That is my son. Whitebeard smiled and started running. He didn't care if his voice disturbed people. Meanwhile, on the roof, ah, uh, Kakashi, who was still half asleep, sighed in frustration. He opened one of his dead fish eyes and looked at Naruto and Whitebeard's backs and yawned as he complained. Is it really necessary to wake up so early? But he had no choice. His mission was to keep an eye on Naruto and make sure he didn't leave Kanoha. He had to pull himself together and run after them. At the training ground, they arrived at the same old training ground on the outskirts of Kanahagakur village. Whitebeard had taken over this area as his base for training Naruto. Naruto ran from his house to the training ground without stopping for a moment. By the time he finally arrived, he was exhausted. Gasp, gasp, gasp. Naruto felt like a dog panting with its tongue hanging out, but he didn't care about his appearance at all. Pops, I can't run anymore. I didn't eat breakfast this morning. Naruto was worried that he might starve to death if he trained without eating breakfast. But before he could catch his breath, he was picked up by Whitebeard. Gururara, you foolish son. If you don't do this, how are you going to unleash your hidden potential? Whitebeard grinned. The special energy inside you always comes out when you're on the verge of death. So, you have to keep yourself in this state of near death every day. Naruto was devastated. Pops, this is going to kill me. Gururara, you can't become Hokage without the determination to die. Whitebeard swung his Murakuma Jairi down at Naruto, startling the sore and exhausted boy into dodging. Get moving! Foolish son! Kakashi, who was standing on a nearby tree, was scratching his head. If I remember correctly when a Jinchuriki dies, the tailed beast dies with them. The nine tails inside Naruto. Could it be that it doesn't want to die, so it's using its power to help Naruto? But he also remembered that tailed beasts could be revived. He couldn't understand why the nine tails were using its power to help Naruto recover. Forget it. Who knows what the tailed beasts are thinking? Hmm? Kakashi suddenly looked in the other direction. He saw two figures, one big and one small, walking towards them. That's Achiha Itachi, and the other one. Could it be his younger brother? 
It was a joyful day for Achiha Itachi. He had successfully obtained permission from the third Hokage to take the day off, allowing him to spend time with Sasuke and teach him the art of shuriken and kunai throwing. To satisfy Sasuke's curiosity, Itachi was always quite indulgent with his younger brother however, just when everything seemed normal, Itachi suddenly sensed something unusual. He lifted his head and spotted a figure on a large tree ahead, knocking on the tree as if trying to get his attention. Kakashi Senpai? The person in question had distinctive features. A head of white hair, a black mask covering his face, and a ninja headband concealing one eye. These characteristics were all too familiar. Achiha Itachi was taken aback by the unexpected encounter with Kakashi Senpai here. Wasn't Kakashi Senpai supposed to be monitoring the Jinchuriki? Wait, could it be? Achiha Itachi was a step too slow because his younger brother, Sasuke, was running ahead excitedly. He turned around and shouted, Brother, there's a river up ahead. Let's camp here and teach me how to throw shuriken. Sasuke, who wasn't paying attention, ran into an unknown object and cried out in pain. He quickly crouched down and held his head. Sasuke, come back. Itachi's expression suddenly changed. Damn it, that hurt. He grabbed onto something and stood up, only to realize that he was holding onto a piece of cloth. Sasuke was stunned. He turned to look at the object he had run into, only to realize that it wasn't a tree but rather a person's foot. He saw a large shoe in front of him. Shoe? Foot? Five-year-old Sasuke swallowed his saliva. He raised his head stiffly and looked up to see a giant who was looking down at him. Little Sasuke was dumbfounded. Giant. 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 Sasuke had been staying in the Uchiha compound for a while and hadn't been out much. He hadn't heard any rumors or gossip about the outside world. He had no idea that a man named Whitebeard had appeared in Kanahagakur. He looked up into Whitebeard's eyes. The emotions in his eyes were mixed. Asterisk, shock, asterisk, fear, asterisk, curiosity, gururarara. Whitebeard's gaze moved away from Sasuke and turned to Itachi, who was standing nearby, ready to fight. He had a cheerful smile on his face. Hey kid, your voice sounds familiar. Were you the masked kid I saw last night? Yes, Itachi said. He knew he couldn't hide from the man, especially since Kakashi had called him by name the night before. In this situation, there was no need to hide anymore. Your little brother? Whitebeard was referring to Uchiha Sasuke. Yes, Itachi could only answer in agreement. He could only respond with two consecutive yes. Gururarara. He is about the same age as my son. Whitebeard slowly crouched down and asked the terrified Sasuke, Hey black-haired kid, what is your name? Achiha is Sasuke. Sasuke replied it was an uncontrollable fear, and even with Whitebeard's restrained aura, the overwhelming presence was something a child could not resist. Even Naruto, when he first encountered Whitebeard, had a similar reaction to Sasuke. Achiha? The familiar surname made Whitebeard raise an eyebrow. Isn't that the Kanoha's police force? Gururarara, you foolish son. Come over. Whitebeard shouted to Naruto. I found you a new friend. An Achiha kid who looks like a girl. Snap. Just after finishing his 50th push-up, Naruto lay exhausted on the ground, panting heavily like a tired fox. But upon hearing Whitebeard's words, his ears perked up, and he managed to crawl to his feet. A new friend? The somewhat disheveled Naruto looked at Sasuke and said in amazement, He really does look like a girl. This father and son duo kept calling him girl, which widened Sasuke's eyes. Disregarding his fear of the giant, he blushed and tried to defend himself. I'm not a girl. I'm an Uchiha. And I'm a boy. The blush makes you look more like a girl. Naruto was astounded. Ah! Sasuke couldn't hold back anymore. He quickly turned to Uchiha Itachi. Brother, I don't look like a girl, do I? Well, you don't. Uchiha Itachi naturally sided with his younger brother, even though he thought Sasuke did resemble a girl. Ahem. I'm Uzumaki Naruto. 
Naruto, despite his aching muscles, walked up to Uchiha Sasuke, grinned broadly, and without his usual melancholy said, We're friends from now on. Nice to meet you Sasuke's eyes widened even more. Hey hey hey, did I agree to this? Gororara, Uchiha kid, it seems your little brother. Not too happy about being friends with Naruto? Whitebeard glanced at Uchiha Itachi with his blank eyes, making Itachi's heart tighten. Sasuke was too close to Whitebeard, and Itachi couldn't guarantee that he could safely take Sasuke away from this situation. Itachi forced a smile and said, Sasuke, it's good to make another friend. He knew Naruto was the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. He was even more aware of the consequences if a member of the Uchiha clan had contact with a Jinchuriki. But he cannot avoid this situation, okay? Sasuke listened to Itachi. He glanced at Naruto's dirty hand, frowned slightly, and cautiously shook hands with him. He was about to release it, but Naruto held on tightly. Ha ha, you're my third friend now. Naruto's face beamed with an even brighter smile. It hurts. Sasuke instinctively wanted to cry out. Who would have thought that someone of his age could have such a strong grip? But he endured the pain. Gororara, you foolish son. You've met your new friend. Now hurry back for special training. I've given you a task of 200 push-ups, but you've only done 50. Whitebeard's voice froze Naruto's smile. He quickly let go of Sasuke's hand and shouted desperately, All right, Pops, I'm starting now. Amid Sasuke's bewildered expression, he watched Naruto run to the side and immediately started doing push-ups on the ground, panting heavily. Soon, he was drenched in sweat and utterly exhausted. What is he doing? Sasuke couldn't understand his behavior. This is Hokage training, Naruto explained between gasps. It's special training assigned by my pops to become a Hokage. As long as I complete this training, I'll get closer to my goal. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, and I'm gonna be a Hokage Databeo. Uchiha Sasuke, just you wait. Among your friends, there will be one who becomes the Hokage of the Kanahagir village, and that person will be me, Uzumaki Naruto. Hokage, Sasuke blinked. That's right, that's right. After I become the Hokage of Konoha, you, Shikamaru, and Choji will be my advisors. Naruto raised his thumb enthusiastically. However, he couldn't sustain the weight of his body with just one hand, and he ended up sprawling on the ground with a nosebleed. Sasuke finally understood the last part. This peculiar guy named Naruto wanted to recruit him as his advisor in the future. I'm the one who's going to be the Hokage. Sasuke instantly felt challenged. In reality, he didn't want to become Hokage, but he had an urge to retort, even though he didn't quite know why. He had this feeling in his heart. This. It was like it was his destiny. Do you want to become Hokage too? Naruto glanced at Sasuke's slender arms and legs as he struggled with push-ups. His face contorted in pain. He couldn't help but look at Sasuke's delicate appearance. Annoyed by Naruto's intense scrutiny, Sasuke couldn't help but ask, What's with the way you're looking at me? You don't seem like Hokage material, Naruto stated frankly. Sasuke, because Grandpa Hokage said that to become Hokage, you must first embody Kanoha's will of fire, Naruto said seriously. Secondly, you have to be a really powerful ninja. And third, you have to be loved by many people in the Kanoha to be Hokage. I don't know how strong your will of fire is, but you don't look like a powerful ninja with that delicate appearance, Naruto recalled. I remember that all ninjas have calluses on their hands, like Grandpa Hokage, and that white-haired ninja with one eye too. He referred to Kakashi, but couldn't remember his name. Naruto continued earnestly, looking at you, it seems like you've never really trained. I think you would be better off assisting me along with Shikamaru. My father is the Uchiha clan leader. My brother is an Umbu member. Sasuke's irritation flared up at this point. If someone said he looked like a girl, he could tolerate it. But saying he didn't look like a ninja was unacceptable. This was an insult to him and to the Uchiha. To call a Uchiha, 
Not a ninja, was that not an insult? Sasuke was furious. His face turned red again. You don't look like a ninja either. Just wait until I awaken the Sharingan one day. I'll be the most formidable ninja. Besides, my brother is already an exceptional ninja at the age of 11, making my father proud. Sasuke thought for a moment and added, My brother has three Tomo Sharingan. Under his guidance, I will definitely become a strong ninja. Your brother? Naruto, drenched in sweat, glanced at Itachi and commented, Indeed, he looks more like a man than you. But, Naruto continued, but, my pops is even more amazing. Just the other day, three people from your Uchiha clan caused trouble for my pops, and with a single swipe of his hand, he sent them flying. Sasuke's eyes widened in shock. Nonsense. I've never heard of it. Naruto smirked. Of course, it's because you're not a ninja, so you don't have the qualifications to know about these grown-up matters. Sasuke suddenly realized that he couldn't argue with Naruto. He turned to Itachi for help, a pleading look in his eyes. Achiha Itachi also displayed a surprised expression. In reality, he had rarely paid attention to his family because the family's troubles had become a great source of annoyance for him. He only knew that there were three Achiha clan members hospitalized, but he didn't know the specific situation. He didn't want to know either. Unexpectedly, those three Uchiha clan members in the hospital were related to the white beard before them, and they had been injured by him. See how powerful my pops is! Naruto beamed with pride. Sasuke gritted his teeth. My brother is the most, most, most powerful. Last night, he caught an iron kunai when I attacked him. Itachi was taken aback, gave a fond, wry smile, and massaged his forehead helplessly. This child, Sasuke... He was bickering with Naruto like kids playing house, and in the midst of it, he exaggerated things. Last night, wasn't it a wooden kunai? Where did he get the idea of catching an iron kunai? Naruto retorted, My pops can catch dozens of kunai. Though he hadn't seen Whitebeard catch so many kunai, he believed his pops could. He trusts his father unconditionally. Big brother can catch explosive tags barehanded. Sasuke boasted, not bothering to consider the logic. My pops can negate the fire release jutsu from your family. Naruto's claim was well founded. He had witnessed it himself. Um, big brother, he he. All right, Sasuke. Itachi took the opportunity to walk over, ruffled Sasuke's little head, and without leaving a trace, moved him a bit farther from that dangerous white beard. So he could finally relax. He breathed a sigh of relief. Itachi smiled at Sasuke and said, Others may not believe that our Sasuke can become an outstanding ninja, but I believe you. Sasuke's mood suddenly shifted from gloomy to sunny. Big brother, you're the best. Big brother. Sasuke suddenly became serious. Could you train me too? Huh. Itachi was a bit slow to react. I can't lose to him. Sasuke's competitive spirit perhaps present since childhood but not very obvious. His little face was serious. I have to prove to him that the gap between a civilian ninja like him and the ninja of our Uchiha clan. Big brother, you said you would teach me throwing techniques, didn't you? In truth, Itachi didn't want to stay here, mainly because Whitebeard was here. He didn't want to put Sasuke in a dangerous situation, but he had no choice. The Jinchuriki had actually stirred up a competitive spirit in Sasuke. Whether that was a good or bad thing, he didn't know, all right. So and so, this area became an odd scene. Whitebeard, in an almost murderous stance, was rigorously training Naruto. Itachi, on the other hand, patiently explained the intricacies of shuriken throwing to Sasuke and nearly strained his muscles when he saw Sasuke throw the shuriken prompting him to check on his condition. The two scenarios were very different. While teaching Sasuke, Itachi would occasionally glance at Naruto, as it was nearly impossible to ignore Naruto's agonized cries. Isn't the Jinchuriki only five years old? Itachi was dumbfounded by Whitebeard's intense training method. He looked at Naruto, covered in injuries and bloodstains all over his clothes. 
His face showed astonishment. Isn't this too dangerous? At this moment, he found himself uttering the exact words as Kakashi did. But for some reason, he noticed that Naruto, the boy from the Uzumaki clan, seemed to enjoy it. Even though he cried out in pain, he obediently completed each training task. That level of determination, that resolve, could a five-year-old child truly possess it? If it were during wartime, it might be understandable, but it was a time of peace. What kind of hardship had this five-year-old child endured to possess such unwavering determination? Unbelievable! Big Brother! Is this the way ninjas train? Sasuke also cast a glance in that direction, and the sight of Naruto's suffering startled him. No, Itachi replied. Even for a ninja's training methods, the intensity Whitebeard employs here, especially for a five-year-old, exceeds what would be expected, surpassing the intensity even for adults. Big brother! Sasuke clenched his lower lip tightly, somehow reminded of Naruto's earlier comment about him looking like a girl. The weather was clear, and the rain had stopped. Suddenly, Sasuke felt like he could do it. He looked up at Itachi and said, You should train me like this too? Itachi. He looked at his little brother's slender arms and legs. He ruffled Sasuke's head. He forced a stiff smile and spoke gently, Sasuke, if our father found out I killed you, he would exile me from the Uchiha clan. He expressed it very delicately. In other words, it's impossible 188, 189, 200. Bang! Naruto once again slammed his face into the ground. The nosebleed that he had just managed to stanch now gushed forth again, but he no longer had the strength to wipe it away. He had to let the blood flow freely on the ground. His entire body was practically in a state of near exhaustion. Gururara, can you only do 200 push-ups? Cough, cough, white beard coughed twice. His aged body, which hadn't been hydrated for days, finally began to feel a bit uncomfortable. However, he paid no attention to his own discomfort. Wearing a smile, Whitebeard sat near the river and playfully joked, You foolish a son, with this level of endurance, you'll never become the Hokage of Kanoha. Tears welled up in Naruto's eyes, who would have thought that becoming the Hokage would be so challenging. He clenched his teeth and struggled to get back up. Surprisingly, he was able to stand up, although he appeared unsteady and could fall over at any time. Pops, Naruto's determination to become the Hokage was profound. He wiped the blood from his face with determination and said, I've rested enough. Please, let's continue with the next phase of training. Gurera Rara, Whitebeard exclaimed with satisfaction. You're growing up, my foolish son. On the other side, Uchiha Itachi didn't follow Whitebeard's training method for Sasuke, which left the slightly competitive Sasuke feeling a bit disappointed. Then, much to Itachi's surprise, Sasuke voluntarily adopted Naruto's training approach. Sasuke, you might hurt yourself, Itachi said, completely caught off guard by his younger brother's determination. After all, Naruto was a Jinchuriki, and his physical constitution was quite special. As for Sasuke, he was an Uchiha, and his most distinguishing feature was his Sharingan. How could he compete in terms of physical fitness? If my brother won't teach me to be a ninja, I'll do it myself. Sasuke thought he was pretty capable, but he soon realized he wasn't as skilled as he had believed. A few minutes later, Ah! Oh, wah wah wah! Brother, my wrist hurts so much. Brother, my arm hurts. Brother, my foot hurts. Big brother, I can't move. Itachi. Meanwhile, at the root base, even though it was broad daylight, the root base was still dim and damp inside, making it look like nighttime. It was difficult for anyone with normal sense to stay there for an extended period. Clearly, there were no ordinary people within the root base. Danzo-sama. Several root ninjas brought several large buckets and placed them in front of Danzo. These buckets were left uncovered, and a strong stench of blood wafted from them. One of the root jonin lowered his head and reported to Danzo, 
We've found all our people. They're all in these buckets. Looking at the buckets, Danzo fell into silence. He walked up slowly and glanced at one of the large bucket. Inside, he could clearly see human body parts soaked and turned pale. Getting closer, he could even detect the smell of a sewer. It was disgusting. We interrogated some of the residents on that street. They mentioned that there was indeed significant commotion last night. The wind, fire, flood, and such that they talked about, we believe those were jutsu our people used. The root Jounin paused, then continued, facing Danzo's intense gaze. However, they also mentioned there was an earthquake that devastated the entire street. Earthquake? Danzo asked with a sidelong glance. Was it an earth-release jutsu? The root Jonin shook his head. According to our thorough investigation, it doesn't appear to be an earthquake caused by earth-release jutsu. Danzo's brow furrowed deeply. His complexion didn't look good at all. One of the root assassination teams that he had painstakingly cultivated had now turned into chunks of flesh in those buckets. Such a situation would be deeply upsetting for anyone, especially the deaths of these dozen or so root ninjas were unknown. How could they be overpowered by an outsider? What a bunch of incompetence! With this group of incompetence in the root, how could they ever protect the well-being of Kanoha? Their deaths were deserved. In truth, Danzo knew he had been careless. He hadn't taken the time to gather intelligence on this white beard. But who could have foreseen such a formidable figure being placed in Kanoha? Danzo. Just at that moment, a voice unexpectedly broke in, sounding quite familiar to Danzo. Saratobi Danzo was taken aback. The Hokage Hiruzen Saratobi had found his way here, entering the root base without any formal announcement. Indeed, the visitor was none other than Saratobi Hiruzen. He had come to demand answers. Danzo-sama, I'm sorry. A few of the root members standing behind Hiruzen Saratobi lowered their heads, unable to meet Danzo's gaze directly because they knew they had no authority to stop a Hokage of Kanoha. Danzo waved his hand. All the root members inside the base immediately vanished from view. Now, it was just him and Saratobi Hiruzen in the room. Danzo furrowed his brow. Saratobi, how did you get here? What do you think? Hiruzen Saratobi's expression turned cold. You won't deny that you've done something, right? Danzo, do you understand the consequences of your actions? Once the tailed beast inside Naruto goes on a rampage, Kanoha will repeat the chaos of the Nine Tails incident from five years ago. As the one who initiated it, you will become the scapegoat for all of Kanoha, nailed to the pillar of history's shame. Saratobi Hiruzen clenched his teeth. And you haven't even restrained your subordinates, and they nearly dragged Naruto into it. Minato and Kushina entrusted their child to me before they died. They want me to take good care of their child. Whether it's for the sake of two Kanoha heroes or for another reason, I must ensure that nothing harms Naruto. Do you understand? Listening to Saratobi Hiruzen's stern reprimands, Danzo felt a simmering anger rising within him. He didn't bow down to admit his wrongdoing but instead retorted, If you know how crucial a Jinchuriki is, why did you choose to let him roam freely? If you had entrusted the Jinchuriki to me, I would have nurtured him into Kanoha's mightiest weapon. I wouldn't have allowed an outsider to exploit the situation and form a bond with the Jinchuriki. Danzo argued, I wanted to eliminate Whitebeard for the sake of Kanoha. Who isn't working for the sake of Kanoha? Saratobi Hiruzen, you act so self-righteous. You think you're extraordinary. You believe you're morally superior. Humph! Danzo snorted and fell silent. He didn't say another word. Saratobi Hiruzen remained silent for a few seconds, not delving into this argument any further. Instead, he emphasized, the Uchiha clan is reaching a critical stage. The situation inside Kanoha is becoming increasingly complex. Danzo, I can't allow the root to keep causing disturbances during such a critical time. Danzo suddenly had an uneasy feeling. What do you mean? He asked. Danzo, I've discussed this with Koharu and Hamura. 
For a period of time, we need to impose restrictions on the root. Henceforth, any actions taken by the root must be informed with the three of us before decisions are made. Danzo was infuriated, shivering with rage. A cold chill ran down his spine and he couldn't accept this. You've overstepped your bounds. You have no right to do this. You'll regret it if Whitebeard isn't eliminated. I'll only regret it if the tailed beast is released. Danzo, I am the Hokage, the Hokage of Kanoha. Saratobi Hiruzen's expression remained devoid of emotion. Don't challenge me. As the Hokage, my power is limitless. Danzo felt like his teeth were about to shatter. Sasuke wasn't exactly a pampered rich boy. He would strive for his father's approval. Even if it meant burning his own mouth, he was determined to master the great fireball jutsu. However, when he trained at the same intensity as Naruto, it felt like a form of self-inflicted torture. The various pains that coursed through his body made him question the purpose of life. Lying on the ground, his face contorted, Sasuke turned his head to watch Naruto, who was still tirelessly training on the other side. He found it baffling, how does that guy keep going? Just after a few minutes, Sasuke couldn't endure any longer. But Naruto? In Sasuke's view, this guy named Uzumaki Naruto had been persisting for nearly half an hour since the training started. He could hear Naruto screaming in agony. For the listeners, it was a heart-wrenching sound. But Naruto didn't stop, even though his teeth were almost grinding into dust. He persisted with unwavering determination. For a five-year-old Sasuke, this sight was truly awe-inspiring. Being born into a prominent clan where everyone acknowledged him, Sasuke couldn't understand Naruto's heart at all. He couldn't comprehend how much Naruto longed for acceptance. Sasuke didn't truly understand Naruto. He didn't know how much Naruto was willing to do to make the villagers accept him and how he had sworn to become the Hokage to achieve that. To gain popularity, to be loved, and not to disappoint his father, Whitebeard, Naruto had to become strong. This, this was his ninja way. Time passed. It reached noon. Uchiha Itachi, deep in thought, prepared Onijirai for Sasuke. He also brought fresh tomatoes and sliced them thinly, then stuffed them into the Onijirai. Onijirai and tomatoes are Sasuke's favorite food. His heavy thoughts were, of course, because of Naruto's presence and reminded him of certain situations within the Uchiha clan. Regarding the thoughts of certain individuals within the Uchiha clan, he understood their stance very clearly. Observing Sasuke, who had to take a break by a tree due to muscle soreness, Uchiha Itachi dismissed any distracting thoughts and managed a faint smile. Sasuke, are you feeling better? I've prepared some on a gyrai. oh. Sasuke replied with little enthusiasm as he approached to take one of the Anajirai, stuffing it into his mouth. What's on your mind, Sasuke? Uchiha Itachi asked with genuine concern. Big brother, am I perhaps not suited to be a shinobi? Sasuke, at his tender age, had been disheartened by Naruto, who had the nine tails sealed within him. I can't even compare to him. I'm not even half as good as him. Obviously, Sasuke referred to Naruto. Uchiha Itachi shifted his gaze toward Naruto. Naruto was still diligently training, and while they all gazed at the food in his hands with greedy looks, but he forcibly restrained himself due to Whitebeard's imposing presence. Naruto continued to endure while screaming, while suicidally practicing. You are different from him. Itachi spoke gently. Each person has their own diamond, and the interpretation of diamond varies. Some see it as a symbol of the younger generation, others as a symbol of one's belief. But for me, I see it as a symbol of innate talent. Naruto's diamond leans heavily towards physical prowess, while Sasuke, your diamond, may lean more towards ninja tools, jutsu, and genjutsu. These two different diamond cannot be directly compared. Itachi made a small joke, after all, you wouldn't compare a boy with a girl to see who can pee farther, right? Sasuke's eyes welled up with tears. Brother, do you think I look like a girl? Itachi panicked, of course not. Sasuke, 
I was just making an analogy, it's a metaphor. Itachi apologized to Sasuke and then lied subtly when you grow up, you'll certainly look like a man. Itachi added those last two lines to his thoughts. Suddenly, Whitebeard's voice attracted their attention. They heard him say to Naruto, Foolish son, it's lunchtime. Today, we're having fish and there's a river nearby. Awesome! Starving and looking like a beggar, Naruto burst into tears. He hadn't eaten anything from the morning until now. He'd only drunk water from the river when he was thirsty, and apart from that, his stomach had been empty. Dragging his exhausted body, Naruto stumbled over to Whitebeard. With hopeful eyes, he saw Whitebeard crouching by the river, dipping his hand into the water. Suddenly, the ground beneath them began to tremble slightly. This, what's this? Some instant jutsu I've never seen. Not far away, Itachi's expression changed. He quickly reached out to hold Sasuke in his arms, feeling the trembling ground. It felt like an earthquake. Big brother, look at the water! Sasuke pointed to the river where the water was violently rippling, creating huge splashes. It couldn't even be called water splashes. They were more like columns of water. Each column was propelled dozens of meters high, creating an awe-inspiring scene. Kakashi, sitting on a thick tree branch while reading Ika Ika Paradise, noticed it. His pupils contracted. Another one of these vibration? He had once witnessed Whitebeard using an extraordinarily strange ninjutsu that caused vibration. Now, it seemed like he was witnessing it again. The numerous columns of water rising from the river splashed in all directions, showering everyone within a few hundred meters as if it were a heavy rain. All their clothes got soaked. It also made Naruto, who was previously covered in dirt and blood, much cleaner, at least cleaner than before. A few seconds later, the shock stopped. The ground beneath them was now covered in fallen leaves like a blanket. Snap! Ouch! Naruto, still in shock, hadn't realized what happened as something hit his head. He touched his head and, looking down, saw something astounding. Fish! Such a big fish! Snap! Another big fish landed beside him, followed by a third, a fourth, until it became a fish rain around him. Naruto couldn't count how many fish had fallen. He just knew there were fish everywhere. All the fish from this stretch of the river were probably here. Ah! Uh -oh. It hurts. A bit unlucky. Sasuke got his big toe hit by one of the falling fish. It hurt so much that tears welled up in his eyes, but the shock in his eyes remained. Itachi reached out to remove a river shrimp from his head and examined it. The power of Quake? Is it Ninjutsu or Kekiai Genkai? But was there a Kekiai Genkai that involved Quake? What kind of chakra attribute combination or evolution could lead to such a Kekiai Genkai? He couldn't figure it out. Gururara. Hey, little Uchiha over there. Come and breathe fire for us. Our lunch today will be a grilled fish feast. Itachi. This this guy really thinks the Uchiha clan members are mobile lighters, doesn't he? In the end, Itachi played along and unleashed a massive fireball jutsu to serve as a barbecue. If Sasuke weren't here, he wouldn't have done it. But Sasuke had always been his weakness. To ensure his younger brother's safety, he decided not to provoke Whitebeard. He would go along with whatever he said. Not long after, the smell of grilled fish filled the air. Itachi wasn't particularly fond of barbecue or grilled fish, but seeing Sasuke drooling nearby, he couldn't help but speak softly to him. Sasuke, that boy named Naruto would probably be delighted to share the roasted fish with you. His eyes have been drifting in our direction, but he seems hesitant to approach. Itachi smiled and continued, Sasuke, why don't you go over and eat roasted fish with them? Take some of these rice balls and share them with Naruto. All right, big brother. Itachi's words broke through Sasuke's fragile psychological defenses. The Sasuke of today was not the same as the one from a year later. He is just a brother who loves his big brother. Gururara. Hey, Uchiha brat. Why are you so reluctant to let your brother stay here? Whitebeard glanced at Itachi. Itachi remained silent, but in truth, 
It was Whitebeard's earlier display of power that made him realize there was no safe area within a hundred meters. Even with Sasuke by his side, it was challenging to ensure his safety. So, he decided to let Sasuke have some fun, especially since they had come out together for this rare camping. Luckily, Whitebeard didn't appear to be an extremely unstable or dangerous character. Kid, Whitebeard looked down at Sasuke. Sasuke raised his head, holding a roasted fish. Whitebeard grinned at Sasuke and said, You Uchiha clan folks are quite special in this Kanahegakur village. I like special brats like you. Itachi had a bad feeling about this. Sasuke blinked his big eyes. Gururarara. Whitebeard laughed loudly. How about becoming my son too? Itachi. As expected, Kakashi, who was eating dry rations not far away, was not surprised by Whitebeard's words. Is this his hobby? What kind of person wants to adopt everyone he meets as his son? Recalling the time he was almost told the same thing by Whitebeard, Kakashi's mouth twitched slightly. Though, from Whitebeard's attitude towards Naruto, he is indeed a qualified father, at least more so than the third Hokage. But, does anyone encounter someone and immediately want to adopt them as their son? Isn't that behavior a bit outrageous? Kakashi found it hard to understand. As for Sasuke, who was invited by Whitebeard to become his son, his little brain completely froze. His small mind couldn't process such a situation. Do you want to be my pop's son too? Naruto's eyes lit up suddenly. Even though I'm not sure why, I don't really like you. But if you want to be his son, then I totally approve. Because, for Naruto, it meant having one more family member. Naruto had experienced the feeling of having a family now. Naturally, he yearned for more family members. Wait, wait a minute. I... Sasuke shook his head vigorously. The overload in his pig-like brain was real. He accidentally got pricked by a fishbone while holding a roasted fish, which jolted him awake. No, I can't. He took a step back and shook his head firmly. I have a father and I have a mother. How can I call someone else my father? Gurarararara. Whitebeard wasn't disappointed. It seems this little guy has a happy and complete family. Seeing this, Itachi also breathed a sigh of relief. Itachi could not allow Whitebeard to adopt Sasuke forcibly. If Whitebeard insisted, he would have to find a way to take Sasuke with him. In the second part of Whitebeard's sentence, Itachi agreed entirely. Sasuke indeed had a happy family. Now and in the future, as dusk approached, Itachi finally had an excuse to bid farewell to Whitebeard and Naruto. Today's camping trip with Sasuke had been nothing short of heart-pounding. Itachi worried constantly that Sasuke would get hurt. However, none of the things he had been concerned about actually occurred. It was full of excitement but not without danger. Itachi held Sasuke's small hand, which had been scratched today because he had been overconfident and dared to follow Naruto's special training program. The two Uchiha brothers made it back to their clan's residence before dark. Unfortunately, they ran into several members of the Uchiha clan, and among them, one person was particularly familiar to Itachi. He noticed them discussing something and the voices were getting louder. Sure sway. How can you ignore your fellow clan member who's been injured and hospitalized by someone? An Uchiha police clenched the collar of a black-haired youth, and they were almost nose to nose. One of Chui's kidneys was punctured by a stone, and he hasn't woken up yet. The doctor said he might become a vegetable, never waking up for the rest of his life. Gon, Fumi, Chui, the three brothers, are members of our Uchiha guard, highly talented. You've led them before. Sure Sway, are you telling me now that you don't want to deal with this situation? The one being held by the collar was clearly Uchiha Sure Sway. Another guard member couldn't help but speak up. Sure Sway, what's going on with you? In these past two years, you've become increasingly indecisive. Where's the sure sway of the body flicker go? Outsiders have already bullied the Uchiha clan. If the Uchiha clan doesn't seek revenge for Gon, Fumi, and Chue, won't everyone think we're an easy target? Uchiha sure sway was very conflicted. 
He understood this situation quite well, and he knew that the person who injured Gon, Fumi, and Chui was Whitebeard, someone who had claimed a Jinchuriki as his son. It was precisely because he understood this situation he knows. He could not get involved. If the Uchiha clan took action against Whitebeard, how would the higher-ups in Kanahagakur perceive the Uchiha? Would they see them as intentionally breaking the bond with the Jinchuriki? Would they accuse them of releasing the Nine Tails intentionally? This would undoubtedly further strain the already tense relationship between the Uchiha clan and Kanahagakur. It was like walking on an almost broken single rope. The slightest pressure could snap the rope. Sure sway. Itachi approached Sure Shue. Their presence drew the attention of the crowd. Itachi? Sure sway was taken aback. Achiha Itachi? Other guard members frowned, and someone even began to say, You, the lapdog of the Kanahegakur higher ups, how? Before he could finish speaking, a shuriken whizzed past, narrowly missing the man's ear and cutting several strands of hair. Those of you calling us lapdogs of the Kanahegakur higher ups should mind your manners, Itachi said coldly. Speak respectfully. You, Several Kanahagakur police members hesitated. They glared at Itachi. Then they turned to Shursue. 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 Even if you're unwilling to participate, we will take action. The Uchiha clan's honor cannot be trampled by outsiders. We are not as weak as you. We are not lapdogs of the Kanahagakur higher-ups. Sasuke, you should head back for now. With a smile, Itachi waved Sasuke off. Big brother will be back soon. Wait at home for a while. No more than half an hour. Oomph. Sasuke pouted, looking a bit unhappy. He thought his brother finally took a day off to spend time with him, but it seemed he got caught up in something else again. He turned around to leave, watching his brother engrossed in a conversation with Shur Sui and not even looking back at him. Sasuke muttered to himself, Brother is always like this. On the other side, Sure Sway spoke with gratitude. Thank you, Itachi. I didn't expect you to help me out of that situation. He smiled at Itachi. If it weren't for you, I might have been entangled with them for a long time. Is this about Gon, Fumi, and Chue? Itachi asked. The members of the police force who want to retaliate against that white beard? Sure Sway didn't conceal anything, saying, Yes. He sighed. I've advised them many times but they don't listen and even claim I'm getting weaker. But logically, we shouldn't mess with that white beard. White beard is quite extraordinary, and he may have formed a bond with our village's Nine Tails Jinchuriki. If we provoke him, how will the higher-ups view us? Itachi pondered and thought of a possibility. The Hokage and the others might think we did it intentionally. Exactly, Sure Sway nodded. He continued, the relationship between the Uchiha and Kanahagakurius already very tense. If we stir up trouble with the Jinchuriki's power at this time, it would lead to a complete loss of trust from Kanahagakur, Shursue said with a serious tone. A civil war might even erupt. Itachi was suddenly shocked. Civil war. Shursue smiled and said, So, no matter what, I won't agree to their demands. Even if they call me weak, I'll stick to my original intention to prevent the outbreak of a civil war. Itachi reminded him, but they might not simply give up because of your refusal. They might act without authorization. That's what's been troubling me, Shursue sighed. Two young Uchiha, whose combined age is no more than 30 years old, were discussing such important political matters. It was a strange sight, but that's how it went in the shinobi world. Maturity comes early, Cough, 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 Whitebeard kept coughing on the way. His injuries from the Summit War had completely healed thanks to his time travel, but the old wounds from before had not recovered. After years of battles on the sea, having gone through hundreds of intense battles, Whitebeard had accumulated a lifetime of injuries. While aboard the Moby Dick, Whitebeard is usually required to have an four-tube and some medications attached to it, and there were often many female nurses tending to him. Now, having crossed over into the ninja world, Whitebeard had gone several days without the four, 
and the hidden injuries were causing him discomfort. His muscles, internal organs, and bones all felt somewhat uneasy. Pops, are you okay? Naruto immediately noticed that something was amiss with Whitebeard and asked anxiously, You've been coughing repeatedly on this journey. Whitebeard let out a deep breath, and the street seemed to erupt in a whirlwind as the dust and smoke swirled around. He planted the end of his sword, the Murakuma Jairi, into the ground, supporting his huge body as he tried to ease the discomfort in his body. After a while, responding to Naruto's increasingly worried expression, he said, Gurarara, you foolish son, I'm doing just fine. Is that so? Naruto scratched his head. Pops, you're not lying, are you? Foolish son. Whitebeard playfully flicked Naruto's forehead. Naruto winced and held his head while yelping. Why would I lie to you? Whitebeard grinned at him. In comparison to a few days ago, my condition is better than ever. Whitebeard wasn't lying when he said this because a few days ago, he had been in the midst of the summit war and was on the brink of death. Now, his physical condition has indeed improved. Bringing Naruto back to his small house and at night, Whitebeard rested beside it. This place had become a regular resting spot for him. The neighbors nearby dared not pass by where Whitebeard was resting. At that moment, Naruto was inside the house, taking a shower and preparing to rest. Outside the house, Whitebeard sat with his eyes closed, resting. Do you need to make a trip to the Kanoha Hospital? These words came not from Naruto but from Kakashi. Kakashi's expression was complex. He knew he shouldn't be offering advice to an outsider, especially someone who had taken away the son of his former teacher, Minato. However, every time he saw Naruto, he felt a bit guilty, and Kakashi wasn't sure why. It was as if he was reminded of his father. Gurarara! Whitebeard didn't hesitate to reveal that his hidden injuries were known, grinning broadly. Even the best hospital wouldn't be able to completely cure it, Kakashi, with his signature deadpan expression, suggested, shouldn't you at least go and see? Kanoha Hospital has many excellent medical ninjas. Whitebeard playfully teased, you, white-haired brat, why are you so concerned about me? Could it be you want to be my son? It's purely for Naruto, Kakashi said, exasperated. Oh, Whitebeard made a clucking noise. You seem quite familiar with my foolish son but it doesn't seem like he knows you that well. Kakashi was silent for a moment and then said, Naruto's father, he was my teacher. I'm not referring to you, I mean Naruto's biological father. Naruto might not know me, but I know him. Afa! Kakashi's eye suddenly widened. Intense pain shot through his abdomen, forcing him to kneel on one knee as his internal organs twisted in agony. What are you doing? Kakashi nearly gagged, staring at Whitebeard. It was Whitebeard who had suddenly poked his abdomen with a single finger, a powerful force that nearly made Kakashi faint on the spot. However, as he looked closer, he noticed Whitebeard's extremely dark expression and an overwhelming sense of wordless pressure seemed to envelop Kakashi. The surrounding air appeared to distort, and it became extremely silent. White-haired brat, Whitebeard looked down at him, then how can you be so at ease watching my foolish son suffer? His biological father was your teacher, and your teacher should have entrusted you with taking care of his son before he died, right? Even if he didn't explicitly say it, you should have had that responsibility, shouldn't you? Over these years, what have you done? My foolish son has been bullied in Kanahagakur, and you should be aware of that, right? Kakashi's rising frustration vanished without a trace. He opened his mouth, but not a word came out. Faced with Whitebeard's oppressive questioning, he was left speechless. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.